Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the High Roller Super Millions, the weekly 10k that takes place over at GG. This is season 2 already, week 9, and as always, I am joined by my absolute favorite former pro, now commentator in the world, Nana Noko. What's up, Nana? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, it's good to see you, of course, and we got a sick lineup here. Um, I don't know, everything's good, how are you? I'm pretty good. Are you still a pro, Nano, or can I call you a former pro officially? Um, it, I I like to call myself a pro, but maybe my skill set doesn't say that. So yeah, maybe uh, you can call me a re semi mainly retired pro. <laughs> okay, but we'll retired, but we'll leave the door open for a potential comeback down the line. Oh, for sure, for sure. That's. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing pretty good mate i had a pretty fun week after we had daniel join us last week and he was talking about how he was playing one of the many day ones of the plo losses our 400 dollar tournament the following day i was like you know what i'll fire a bullet let's just see it what happens we'll play a day one and i actually had a good run and then i ended up with daniel on the ground at the same table in one of the day ones and i uh, actually took all of his chippies not once but twice <laughs> so I, I had a lot of chips going in today too, or at least for one entry, because obviously some people bought in many times. But 70 big blinds into the Sunday night, I was like, all right, let's see if we can run it up. 580 players started day two, and I made it into the top 50, but exactly top 50, Nano, no, that was it. Literally 50th place, huh. but one hell of a run for me. 49 people between me and a bracelet, and if that would have happened, I honestly, I think I would have just made myself the pro here. And I may, would have made you the host, but unfortunately, uh, I can't do that yet. <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool though, right? Like, it, it's pretty hard to get that deep. Um, it must have been fun playing with Dan. You always talk about playing with the superstars out there, right? But getting to play with Dan and having just spoke to him, right? Uh, must have been cool. Mm -hmm. uh, still a good run, I'm sure. You had a, you were streaming a little bit or something, but... Uh, I, yeah. I streamed all Sounds of it. Great. All of day one. And all of day two as well. But anyway, this is our pre pre show. We're chatting too much already. Let's go ahead and take a look at the odds when it comes to the final table betting of the High Roller Super Millions week nine. I honestly think we've got a fun lineup. Maybe not quite the same as last week, where obviously we had a very special edition, a bracelet on the line, and we had the magical story of Eric Seidel winning his ninth bracelet. But I looked at our lineup for this week, Nanonoko, and I was not unhappy. If anything, I was actually quite pleased. How are you looking at this week's lineup and what the hell is going on with your pick of the week? <laughs> well, first off, I do think this is a good lineup. Uh, we've got actually got a lot of new names here, but uh, definitely a lot of familiar faces that we know, like uh, Ben CB, you know, Mike Watson, Dayer, Sarantino, Nicholas Estet, of course, um, Elis up top. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a tough, it's a good lineup. Um, and yes, my pick of the week, sure. I, you know, people are asking me, what is a good who do I recommend to bet for final table betting, right? Because, um, you know, Ben CB, yes, he comes in last place, but the last place guy has been coming with a decent amount of big blinds these days. So he came on with 25 big blinds, roughly, I believe. And that's a lot to work mm -hmm. for, especially for a master like Ben CB, who knows how to play every short stack. Um, you're going to get better value just because he's at the bottom with plus 1220 compared to, like, the chip leaders, you know, you know, plus 355. If you got a little bit of faith, you know, I kind of like looking at the bottom. I mean, I feel like last time Ben won it, he did come in in 8th place as well, but this time he comes in in ninth place. When I uh, had James reach out to me and he's like, hey, I need your pick of the week. And I already kind of knew our lineup and I was like, okay, I'm sure that Nano either picked Cal Burns or Elis. And then I see you pick Ben CB, I'm like, well, all right, Nano. I mean, I love Ben as much as the next guy and I believe in the King Six uh, suited powerhouse, but I thought this was a bit out of line. I went for Elis Parsonen. I know that he's more of a PLO expert, massive, and no limit hold'em. But I honestly think we have both always been impressed whenever he's been at our final tables. He doesn't play too well, but he doesn't make any mistakes. He's solid. He knows how to make those pay jumps. He hasn't won it yet, but he got damn close once. And I do really believe that Elis has what it takes to win a high roller Super Millions. And I kind of feel it's a matter of time. And why not make that matter of time today, I believe? Yeah, no. Um, I 
you know, usually you don't look you don't you don't look at the top guys when you're tell, recommending people who to do the final table betting on. You like to get get the guys in the middle, maybe towards the bottom. But today, I guess you can't get away from that Finnish power, right? Um, but Elis has been very impressive. Um, every time we've seen him play, I I've always liked how he played. Um, he he did get second place, right? He didn't actually win it. Is that what, yep. what you were saying earlier? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it was mighty impressive. He's a great player. I haven't seen him in a while, but I don't think it's because he's been busting the tournaments. I just think he hasn't been playing the tournaments. That's my guess. Could be wrong. Um, because I think if he had been playing very regularly to Supermoons, we would have already saw him this past, you know, four or five months or so. Um, but it's great to see him. Uh, I think we should also talk about Nicholas instead, of course. You know, like, yeah. how can we not? Yeah, that seems guys, reasonable. He's got a special name. I know. He's green. I don't know why he's green. Maybe that's because he is one of the all-time best performing players in a high roller of Super Millions, or he it's is exactly striking that, a little deal. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got more trophies than anyone else. That trophy case, you can still just scroll through it, and he keeps on adding new trophies each and every single week. We know for a fact that Nicholas has been trying in Season 2, but so far it wasn't quite working out. And most weeks it wasn't even just a single bullet. It was quite a few. This time, though, Nicholas has turned things around. And he's actually uh, finally back to where I would say he belongs. And 1.6 million. It may be towards the bottom because he's got less chips than new and less chips than old fishing. But it's still quite reasonable. It's definitely the kind of stack that Nicholas could very well end up winning just another high roller super millions. Yeah, for sure. And just, I guess, the fact that he's so good and he's done so well in the Super Millions, that's why the odds for him actually is not as good as it should be, right? Because he's sitting on 1.6 million, but look at Rodrigo and Neo, and they're, you know, they're sitting on 2.2 .2 million, and, you know, it's just uh, favorite people. And I guess that's kind of what happens, right? Like, you always tell me, you're better at betting on odds and stuff like that. I'm just better at choosing pure winners, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, great player. But I guess we can talk about our chip leader a little bit. Is he a good mm -hmm. bet? Maybe some people don't know him. I think he is a good bet. Um, he's actually got a big chip lead now that I look at it. Like oh, about a million chips more than the second place guy. And he doesn't play all the super millions because the time zone's a little funny for him. I, I believe. And he just didn't want to grind them. But, you know, WSOP, everyone makes their way out. He went to go fly somewhere to play. He is an Aussie. A uh, very good player. I... I I think there's a good chance he takes it down, to be honest. But, you know, just from an odds point of view, you're only getting plus 355. I guess it starts around like 3 or 4 a.m. his time. Yeah, I don't actually know exactly what the starting time is. And obviously, late Ranch is open for quite some time. But if I have to make a solid guess, I would say that the tournament probably starts 3 or 4 a.m. on a Monday. I guess there are not too many people on this planet that roll out of bed at 2 a.m. on a Monday morning. And it's like, I feel like playing a 10k poker tour and this is my peak condition you know from 3 to 11 let's go ahead and qualify for day two and i guess that's the main reason why we haven't seen him before uh, i was thinking of it actually like this could very well be one of these weeks where it's just the chip leader winning like obviously that wasn't the case last week last week was quite wild and the week before was also wild where i feel like everyone that was at the bottom was chip leading and now we're into our final table something we would never really seen before this could be one of these weeks where Calburn just runs away with it, especially if he wins a big one early on. But he's got some fierce competition, and we know that Ben is a patient man. Ben is not someone who feels that he needs to get it all in as soon as he drops to 14 big blinds. So, I, I, nothing is a luck, but I don't think you can go too wrong with uh, betting on Cal Burns. And the odds yeah. are actually somewhat reasonable for the amount of chips he has. I was thinking about it, then I was like, nah. I, I can't betray Elis. We've been hyping him up. I've been cheering for him in the past. I feel like that would be betrayal. So one more time, Elis. I had to go with you. But what I think Cal is a very uh, solid pick. Do you have any chance? Talk about your bets. Did you put any bets down today? I I put some bets down. I bet a hundred bucks on Elis Parsonen, and then I put a little bit of money on Ben C B just because. In case you get really annoying and your pick of the week starts doing really well, I needed to make sure that I'm not too bothered by your happiness so I can just tag along for the ride. And then I also put some money on Nicholas. Okay, so you got the powerhouses here. I, I do think those are solid bets. Um, we'll see. There's some new people out there, right? Like we got Rodrigo, Neo, Old Fishing. We don't know anything about these guys. But lately, the unknown players have been pretty impressive. They've been fighting. They've been actually pretty good. Um, so, mm -hmm. 
You know, just because you see three new guys doesn't mean it's a, it's going to be a soft lineup. So we'll see. Yeah, I believe two of these guys, I think it's Neil and Old Fishing that managed to qualify for the main event in the first place through satellites. One of them uh, won a 500 something dollar satellite and the other one played a 1k satellite. Uh, final table betting is now officially closed, guys. That means that these guys will already be playing, but we will be talking about all the action in exactly 30 minutes from now. Hopefully you guys were able to get some final bets in. We didn't even talk about the guy who's always salty in your eyes. Well, we'll talk about him sooner. Anyway, Nano. Let's just continue our little chitty chat then from the pre-show where we were this close. We were 49 people between you having to address me from here on out as your Royal Highness WSOP bracelet winner Rotterdam. You dodged the bullet, mate. It was so close. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty sick now. But I actually would love it if you did that. Um, you know, maybe you get carried away and start satelliting into these super millions and maybe I can finally commentate on you or something like that. But that would be fun. Um, but I don't know if you saw, if someone did win a bracelet that wasn't you from Finland, the European, in the 1K GG Masters, I believe. Did you know that? Literally, like, no, I did not today know or that. yesterday or I something like that. Know. Yeah. Okay, that's cool, because right? I know there's been obviously a lot of violence at this point, and we even mm -hmm. have the 5K main event, day one's already running, and I know that we've been giving out a couple of bracelets, but I didn't know the European won one. Talk to me about it. Yeah, so it's the GG Masters 1K, so that's a freeze-out tournament, right? Because it's the GG Masters, mm -hmm. so, you know, it feels, I feel like it's, it's a little special if you win the freeze-out ones, right? You can't just buy them for 12 bullets like some of the guys do in the Super Millions, right? Um, but I, th I think he came into the final day, maybe final 40 people, uh, day two, I mean, uh, in around sixth place. And uh, it sounds like he held the chip lead for a long time. He lost like a big pot maybe of aces or two aces and then he came to the final table in eighth place but man that guy can grind like crazy took it down on just one of my favorite players one of your favorite players finished player and your pick over here on today's betting also finished so makes sense so you say you're telling me there's something magical in the air in finland that's cool was it a big field it must have been quite big right because if it's a 1k bracelet event i feel like that must attract a lot of players uh, yeah, it's probably at least 2,000 people, up to 3,000, I'm guessing. Um, but I don't know exact numbers, but usually those tournaments have like a 2 million guarantee minimum. So I'm not too sure. But it's a big field. Unique players. You got to remember that. It's not 100 yeah, yeah. Nicholas Estets, 100 Michael Adamos. You know, it's, it's literally like one of them and everyone else. You know, uh, speaking of Daniel, as Daniel obviously played a lot of uh, PLO Osses day once because all the chips would just stack up and then we would <laughs> carry them over into day two. He actually had one hell of a run though in the actual event. I think he in the end finished like 12th or 14th, but I don't even want to know how many bullets he fired because even in the day after, he was already the chip leader going into day two and that's when I was playing my flight. He was... He was running it up and then he busted and he just immediately rebought and i think over every single day like every flight probably two or three bullets multiple times sometimes only a single one because he did make it into day two but i was like this is not totally fair you know here you have people playing with one bullet two bullets and then you have daniel firing away each and every single day but yeah no winning a uh, gg masters that's indeed one of the tourneys where you can only buy in once cool let's just so go ahead and dive he, into um, some profiles hold on, hold on. i want to ask you yeah. Roddy, so he actually was the chip leader going into day two. How many chips did he have and how many more chips did he have than the second guy? Like blinds wise, I guess. Uh, I mean, it wasn't insane because he obviously wasn't the only one doing that. There were a lot of people trying a lot of day ones, but I, I think he entered day two with something like 2.4 million chips. And to put things in perspective, I entered day two with 345,000 chips. And I had 70 big blinds, so... <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, so he had how, how many big blinds did he have then? That's like 500 Probably 400 or something, right? or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Jay Nenders actually That's had it. a legendary run in the PLO Osses too. He didn't win it, but he got really close. He was at my table at the final 50 when I busted. He hit me with a goodbye emote. I was like, thanks, Jay Nenders. <laughs> and uh, I, I saw him make it... I believe into the final table and our producer said he even finished top three i thought it was like top seven but that's quite insane because a grand total of 4800 entries were made into the plo losses 
So Jane Enders living up to his name as absolute PLO uh, crusher and expert. Having a phenomenal run. No bracelet, but he got damn close. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at their profile of our chip leader. As we have 26 minutes until the cards go up in the virtual air for us. We know that they are actually already live. Let's kick things off with Cal Burns. Two-time WSOP bracelet winner. His very first Season 2 appearance by the looks of it. In Season 1, he did have a couple of uh, well, attempts. He made it into our final table twice, apparently, and a ninth place and an eighth place. Is it safe to say that today he will do better than he's ever done before, Nanonoko? He definitely will do better um, because he's coming as the chip lead. And this guy will play for the win. Um, he just really will. He won't pass up a spot. I think he's an amazing player. Uh, he's a really nice guy, too. Very friendly. Loves the game. Plays the high stakes. It's nothing to... He's just gonna he's gonna perform today. He's guaranteed top two. That's what I'm thinking. I will fight you over that. Nothing is guaranteed in <laughs> poker. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Burns had then that helped him become the chip leader. Actually, our hand histories tonight are going to be quite fun. And I have quite a few questions for you. I already went over them. And this one is wild. Nanonoko. I'm not even gonna do any of the talking. Talk to me and how the hell did he get this one through? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty nice hand, right? Like, uh, in this one, it is three ways to the flop. And then, you know, he, he, he gets two people. Someone C bets, or someone bets the flop, and two calls on the 10-9-5. When they all check around on the jack, right? It, go, it really looks like they don't... Um, the two other guys, they can't really have two pair plus. They often would bet that, you know? Like, it just seems they're capped at like a one pair type hand is what I want to say and then Kale Burns realizes that and realizes if he bets into two people pretty much all of the chips it'll look extremely strong uh, so that's why he did it I think he thought he can get like queen jacks to fold you know king jacks you know ace tens all these types of hands because and he's not worried about the straights and two pairs because he thinks those hands would always bet uh, the turn since they had the opportunity to do so and this was obviously quite early in the tournament as well. I mean, it's it's somewhat late as Neil did have over a million chips, but this is also not like one or two hands before the final table. So this absolutely helped him because at this point, Cal Burns is nowhere near the chip leader. Even after winning this pot, he's only playing like 600k. You compare that to the 1.1 million that Neil is playing, Cal must have been running incredibly hot in the last uh, 45 minutes or something before making the final table. But I looked at this hand and I'm like, damn, that is so crazy because maybe late reg is still open here but it's honestly very close but you don't really want to start a tourney with 100k at this point that is negative ev no matter how good you are so pretty sick hand managed to get it done uh hope to see a little more of this kind of stuff later on tonight because then i know we're in for a very good one let's go ahead and take a look at the man that's chasing him and that is of course our plo mastermind from finland who has done very well in the high roller super millions in the past pot limit omaha master that's how i would have wanted you to call me if i would have won the plo losses 49 people yeah. prevented me from a lifetime of joy as you guys can see in season one elis parsinen did very well he finished ranked 25 overall of like 1400 players in total but he really didn't play that much. He didn't play that many times at all. But he got not one, but two second places. Apparently even back-to-back. -back. November 10, November 17. I don't even remember that. But back-to-back -back second places. Also a decent run in the Spring Series Festival uh, High Roller. I'm happy to see Edis back, man. He's just a really good player. And even if it's maybe not totally his game. Because it's not PLO. I think he can hold his own in No Limit Holder. Oh, he definitely can hold his own. Um, and this is his first appearance in season two. So like I said, I didn't I don't think he played that much at the end of season one That's why we didn't see him for like what half a year or more um, But for a guy to get two second places and look at those scores of those second places, right? 472k and 602k. Those are big ones. These aren't the little small ones, you know, like uh, That we're used to seeing, wow. um, you know, where you maybe get like th 300k for first like this guy massive scores amazing player it's really not more than just a PLO master. Like, he's just a master of poker. And I'm excited to watch him play. He's good. 
I know that you've seen a lot of things over your life in Pokémon and Noko, but I don't think we have ever commentated a little small one. Because most second places <laughs> are still always over 200k. And I think no Less matter big. how good you are in poker, yeah, that, that is more than sometimes you get for winning a WSOP bracelet. Like, I know there are plenty of events where you don't win 200k for winning a bracelet. So, they are not that little, okay? I have to correct you there. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Elis had that absolutely helped him to create a monster stack at this final table. This is the kind of hand that I could play too. But I gotta say... Uh, Mr. What is his name? Silver something? Silver Stein? I'm gonna go with. He got very unlucky with that run out, Nanonoko. Yeah, super unlucky, but like he, this, he played Pocket Aces really good here if you think about it, right? Like he raised the cutoff, got 3-bet uh, by the big blind. A lot of people get carried away and want to just 4-bet because they're like, well, he's got to have a big hand. He's 3-betting from the big blind. He could have just called. But you got to know your opponent, so he does just call here with the 2 Aces. Obviously a great flop. That's easy to play from here. Uh, he called Calls, just calls the top set, of course. Checks the turn. Even though, yes, there's some straight draws, but, you know, it's a three-bet pot, so unlikely. And then the river, his opponent goes for a third pot, and he jams. Uh, really well played from Elis Parson, and, and I, I really love this hand. Yeah, I think he played it very well. I, I Is there a world, Nananoko, where you don't raise the river because you're worried about a flush, or is that just not something you're ever worried about? I... I don't think there's a world, especially when my opponent bets, oh, it's not even a third pot, it's a little bit less than that. It just screams like kind of like a crying, like just trying to get value of maybe an ace-x type hand, or usually. I think you just have to jam this hand, um, given the action. Like, if we're deeper, maybe I can find a call somewhere, but even then, I, you're really pushing it. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be very, 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 very tight, but... I guess one out of uh, 99 times you will save your tournament life there by calling. All the other times you miss out on value. Elis got it all. Silverstein discussed it with that run out, of course. Because it's like, it's like he's got not much on the flop. And then on the turn you have a little something. And then on the river suddenly you think your hand is good. But actually you were drawing pretty damn dead. He's wrong to run a runner on the flop. And on the turn he was dead. Moving on. After Elis Parson and in third place, we are going to take a look at the profile of a man that we haven't spoken about at all. So maybe you can tell me a little more about him. Rodrigo Saluan. Apparently he won the Battle of Malta main event. And if I recall correctly, you commentated that with a beautiful lady. So talk to me, Nanonoko. Um, I don't know anything about this guy. It, I did commentate on one Battle of Malta, I believe with Kevin Martin. But... There has huh. been many a beautiful battle lady. Maltas. <laughs> <laughs> There's been several battle Maltas. I don't know which one he did. I only, only did one. So I don't know who this guy is. I think that's the safe to say. But he won 636000 in the battle Malta for a $500 tournament. That's insane because that's like, I don't even know how many buy-ins is. It's a ton. Um, but he did satellite in here. Took, took some of those winnings. Didn't, you know, he didn't pure shot, just buy straight in. He, you know, he, he satellite in. And uh, he's from Brazil. Has to be good. That's what I think. That is uh, over a thousand times your buy in, right? Or am yeah, I, crazy? I, I guess so, right? Because I was like, I don't think it's a hundred. I'm just not going to say it because I can't be wrong if I don't say it. Well, like, it's, it's obviously kind of difficult to calculate, but if 10 times your buy-in would be 5k, then 100 times your buy-in would be 50k, and 1,000 times your buy-in would be 500k, and it's a bit more than that, so we're looking at almost 1,100 times his uh, initial buy-in. That is a monster score, but he did still satellite his way in, so he's not getting carried away just because he won the Battle of Malta. He's not in for seven bullets. He satellited his way into the High Roller Super Marines, and he made the final table immediately. And we can take a look at one of the hands that this man had, where he battled it out with our champ. This champ is very recognizable. Our champ of the very first edition of Season 2 of the High Roller Super Marines, our chess grandmaster league player, Otomar Latva. Uh, talk to me, Nanonoko. Pretty funny hand. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool hand, right? Like, Otomar, we can see how aggressive he is. Um, I was, You always talk about wanting to see him again. Hopefully, we will. But in this hand, Rodrigo... You know, it goes check, check on the fluff. He still check calls the turn with king, queen, high. And then he hits the king. His opponent bets because, you know, he's Audemars and, you know, he takes it down. But I like the check call on the turn. You know, some guys think, well, if I don't have ace high, I'm not going to continue here. So, you know, he still calls with king, queen and it's good. Well done. 
You know, Altamar actually final table bubbled. Oh. In tenth place. That, that made you a little sad, I'm sure, but you know, like someone's got to go down. <laughs> yes, it did make me a little sad, but then again, we did get Ben, even though Ben has a tiny stack, so that made me a lot sad. But yeah, I'm sure that we'll see Olimar again because he keeps on trying, and I really do think that his performance in the first week of season two was excellent. If you guys ever want to watch some of the previous editions back, all of them are stored over at the GG Poker page on YouTube. It's very easy to find them. And we keep on saying this, but season two so far, guys, has been good. We had a lot of fun in season one, and we had a lot of good final tables, of course. But season two, I really don't think we had a single week that it was boring or underwhelming. Maybe the first few editions were really wild, but even after that, we had plenty of fun. And last week was, of course, crazy too. Hopefully tonight, a little more of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the man that's chasing Rodrigo then. And that is Neil, our other satellite winner. He won a $525 satellite into the main event. Has never played in the High Roller Super Millions before. And it's safe to say that normally he plays events that are a little smaller than 10k now. Though. I see a $50, I see an $88, I see a $250 main event. Good prizes, good scores of course, very nice runs. But not a single buy-in, well other than the $1,550 stack I guess, over 1k. Yeah, this is a true satellite winner. Okay, I I said usually the guys are going to be pretty aggressive, right? These unknown players. This one, I'm, I think I'm going to go with he's going to get those pay jumps and go for them really hard because this is truly a big event for him. But he comes in fourth position, 55 big blinds. So either more time to wait or maybe he splashes around a little bit and then loses some. If he loses chips, then he waits. Who knows? <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Neil had on his journey to his very first final table in the history of the High Roller Super Millions. Also versus Ultimar Lotva. And this is a hand that now I looked at it and I just... I felt a bit disgusted for Ultimar. I'm like, come on. Like, you can't make this up. It's not just that he drills the four on the turn, but it's also that poor Ultimar gets trip kings on the river. It's pretty gross, isn't it? Yeah, this is just a sick one. I mean, the 6-3 as played, I obviously nothing wrong with that. He's got a little gut shot. You know, he got some back doors, hits it. It's just the perfect run out too, because Aldemar, maybe some bad cards come on the river, like a 6, an 8, a 3, an ace, and you know, he doesn't get stacked here, right? But with the king, just take my money. Pretty, pretty sad. I don't think it could have been any better for Neil. I don't think it could have been any worse for Olimar. Olimar was definitely on track to make it to the final table, as you can, as you can see before this hand started. He had a lot more chips than he ended up with, and eventually final table bubbled. But well done by Neil. I mean, he saw the back doors. I actually had a funny hand as well last su Sunday in my PLO losses. I was put to the test for all my chips, and I didn't have it, but I had a flush roll. And then I looked at my other two cards, and I saw a 5-4, and on the board there was a 6. And then I heard that little Nananoko voice, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And I'm like, I'm not just playing the flush draw here, I'm playing the backdoor straight draw. The backdoor straight draw didn't come, but the flush draw did come, so I was like, thank you Nananoko. You gave me a double, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, moving on, as our next player is also someone that we're not that familiar with. Uh, old Fishing. Playing from Macau, apparently the very first time he's playing in the High Roller Super Mirror, or at least he has never cashed before, but seems like in Season 1 didn't participate too many times. But this is no stranger to High Rollers, that is a slightly different buy in history than the $50 main event and the $80 Sunday special. He is, he is, uh, he's familiar with High Rollers, Nano. Yeah, I mean obviously, um, you know, he's a High Roller. And, um, yeah, I can't really tell you much about him other than he's a high roller, but, um, have you ever played from anyone from a cow before in your experience? No. No, you don't really see, uh, I don't see those flags too often. They are mostly in the, the tournaments that I do not participate in yet. I gotta say, I don't know what's sick it that he's playing 25k, so that he's playing a 25k Blade Turbo. <laughs> that is next level. Where it's like, no, 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 those regular 25Ks, they take too long, man. Just give me a turbo. Let's spin it up. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that he had, which I'm sure is a hand that will spark a lot of joy for you, even though there is not a lot to analyze. But look at that, Nenonoko. Those pocket fives, they do make sense sometimes. 
<laughs> yeah, jeez. Why are they making sets when I'm not involved? That's the problem here. Jesus Christ. Move on. <laughs> Move on. Uh, well, actually, so he just regem the fives and he got called by kings because the kings open under the gun. Yeah, well, jamming with fives, nothing wrong with it. Getting called by kings could be problematic. It's a little less problematic when you can just roll five and get it over with. Nano hopes to see a little more of this today. We can promise that. We'll see. I'm excited for it. Next up, we're going to take a look at the man who probably has the best looking profile of anyone that participates in the High Roller Super Marines. Nicholas Ostad. Oh, that's right. He's a Team Champions member. That's why he's got a green name. Because he won... Yeah, what did he win? He won something. That he, like, he wasn't even supposed to win, but he won everything. And he got a little extra, so he gets a couple of the buy-ins covered, and he gets listed as a ch team champions member of GG. I think we commentated that too, or commentated. It was like the 1K that he won. But yeah, most Super Millions final tables in Season 1. He played all the Super Millions in Season 2 so far, but he hasn't cashed a single time. So it's safe to say that it was about time for Nicholas Ostad. I mean, no, no. This is a profile that sweet baby dreams are made of. Yeah, obviously. Um, you know, he's very good. Yeah, and not he won a bunch of tournaments, so that's why he's got that um, little logo or whatever you call it. Uh, I'm excited to see him play. Yes, he didn't cash yet in season two, but what, ten editions or something, or nine editions? Like, you can't fault him for not making it by then. So yeah, let's watch wow. him play. Wow. Nine weeks, <laughs> multiple bullets. His name is Nicholas Ostad. I think we can blame him a little bit. We know that he can do better. He must have just been running pretty unlucky or bad. Because we know he has been trying. But it's good to see Nicholas back where he belongs. And that is, of course, at the final table. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had. Where he battled it out with one of the guys that has actually made it to the final four of the 10K heads up. That is Alex Ponakov. The 10K heads up will also be broadcasted on GG Poker by two commentators with slightly more experience than Nenonoko and I, Alon McCarran and... Damn it. What's his partner in crime? Nenonoko, help me. The funny guy. Norman Chad? Norman Chad? There you go. Yeah, I was drawing a blank. There you go. Thank you, mate. <laughs> I know you got my back. Anyway, that's Alex. We wish him all the best in the 10K heads up. But talk to me about this hand, the aces of Nicholas Osset. Um, and let's see, in this hand, he C-bets the aces, gets led into on the turn by Alex Ponikov, and, you know, he just calls, and his opponent bets a third, and he calls again. You know, I think the ace is here. It's, you want to be safe. You could be up against a, a better hand, for sure, like a nine would play this way. But, you know, if your opponent has a hand like Queen Deuce suited, like, he's not going to call a raise anyways, so I think it's very well played. Mm -hmm. We know Nicholas is, set, is very solid. He doesn't, he doesn't get too, too out of line. But when he does, usually it works. And this one, I like the way he's being solid. What Alex does there is becoming quite popular, I've realized, in MTT Poker. Where if they just call on the flop and then the board pairs on the turns, they suddenly lead out. Are you, uh, are you on board with this hype train of leading out on paired boards? Yeah, it's actually very, um, very popular. It's, um, it's very, been very popular in cash games, too. I remember when I was playing, like, Doug Polk was doing it. Like, he was, like, the first guy I saw doing it. Um, so it's just kind of like, especially when the middle card or the bottom card pairs, it mm -hmm. hits the big blind more. The reason is the guy who pre-flop raise, generally, they don't see that the middle pair or the bottom pair as much. So if that's the case, then they don't hit the trips as much. And so, therefore, the guy in the big blind can represent it better. And also kind of control the action. Because, like, let's just say, if if uh, Alex did have a 9, you know, like, he can get some good value. But if he's got a flush draw, and, you know, he, say, Nicholas that raises, and then Alex wants to go crazy and rejam, like, he might fold the best hand of two aces here. So it's actually really locks up the play and makes it uh, tricky to play against. And I do like the lead in general, like, especially when the non like the middle or bottom card pairs up i'm glad that you like it moving on we have three more profiles and three more hands to cover in six minutes so i think we're kind of on track next up is the man that you always tell me is salty i don't believe it i really don't think this guy has anything to so uh, to be salty about we take a look at this profile and it is a marvelous looking profile 
could be a little salty that he's never won the high roller super millions because the second the third a fifth so today he's either gonna take first or fourth place that is my prediction dario sammartino uh playing from austria but we all know that he is a born and raised italian unless i'm making stuff up right now but i'm very sure about that You're sure. uh it's good to see dario sammartino back let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had and we'll let you do some analysis because i think it's somewhat of a Actually, no, 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 Cole. you don't have to analyze it, but you can do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you what. Uh, he's salty. Yes, he's so salty. He hasn't won the Super Millions. Um, he got second place for six million. Could have got first for 10 million, right? Like he got third place in some 100K tournament. Like he, he should be salty. He probably doesn't have many trophies. He just has lots of big, lots of money, but no trophies. <laughs> well. I know a lot of children that have lots of trophies and no money, Nanonoko. I think they would like to trade. We get participation trophies all the time now. Anyway, Dario Sammartino jammed it here as he was very short in this phase in the tournament. Or very short. He was somewhat short. Big blind was 10k. Yeah, he was like down to 11 big blinds. So pretty impressive. Then he ran it up. This was obviously a big one to win. Three way all in versus the Kings of Neil and the Queens of Arseny Malinov. Well done, Dario Sammartino. I don't think there's too much else we can really say about this. So let's move on and talk about the profile of Michael Watson. Nanoko, I feel like we have seen Michael Watson a couple of times. The Mad Dog in Season 1, a 3rd place, a 4th place, a 7th place. He's done well, but just in case anyone at home forgot, what can you tell us about Michael Watson? Well, when we kept on seeing Watson in the beginning of Super Millions, he kept getting ninth place, eighth place, and seventh place very regularly. Um, we, I kept on telling you he's a good player. He didn't show it uh, in our final tables because he kept on getting eliminated very quickly. Then he finally got one of the big scores. You can see the third place for half a million dollars. That's a big one. Even the fourth place for 187 is pretty cool too. Um, He's coming in near the bottom, but he's just been around a long time. Like, you know Timex, he's he's good friends with Timex. I know they used to grind way back when, right? So he's been playing forever, and he's still playing the highest stakes. Great player. Uh, hoping to see, hope to see him do good. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had. And it's actually kind of a fun one, where he was battling it out with Guillaume Nolet. Obviously a very familiar face to our show as well. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left, Nano, so talk to me about this one. I thought it was a pretty fun hand. Yeah, I mean, like, he check calls a turn, drills on the river, then out of position, jams the river because, you know, he's got the flush. He knows this card. His opponent's just going to keep checking back so often. Not not really a card that his opponent would want to bluff. Like, who tries to represent seven? So he just tries to represent the clubs himself, and he gets paid off. Well done. What do you make of the call by Guillaume Nolet? Uh, obviously, it's very easy for us to sit here afterwards and be like, oh, maybe you shouldn't call. But like mm. sets are amazing. And it's actually it gross, of course, when you flop top set. And this is the run out where you feel like pretty much everything gets there. But is there a world where we can start folding our set of sixes there? You could consider because it's, it's a lot of big blinds still, right? Like 27 big blinds, um, you know, flushes to get there too. And the straight gets there. It's. You know, it's it's close, but you know the thing is, Mad Dog's pretty aggressive, so you mm -hmm. probably have you might have to call this against him, but against some other guys, I can definitely be pitching this pretty easily. I guess it has something to do with Mad Dog opening under the gun as well, right? And you don't put him on too many uh, sevens or deuces, mm -hmm. I guess, or eights. I guess I don't know. Uh, perhaps that has something to do with it. Yeah, maybe just hope to go up against queens or aces with the ace of spades, something like that. Anyway, moving on, we have one more profile to cover, but it's a good one, and it's one that really counts. The original creator, the OG of the King Six suited powerhouse. Once upon a time, Ben CB won a four ray all in, I believe it was, with King Six of Spades, and we haven't stopped talking about it ever since. Has not crashed a single time yet in season two, but this is his first one. We are super happy to have Ben CB back. He is probably streaming this as well over at Raise Your Edge. So if you guys want to see what Ben has to say about the hands, feel free to take a look at Ben's stream. Great dude, great ambassador for poker. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Ben CB had. Because if this man is not running through the forest, working on his stamina, he is playing poker. And he flopped the set here against... Mr. Man, Silverstein has been getting unlucky today <laughs> or Sunday. What the hell, Nanonoko? 
Yeah, we don't even know Silverstein. He's never reached our final table. This guy's getting brutalized. Uh, ben CB gets good value here, set over set. His opponent, you know, safely uh, played the pocket deuces though, so he didn't get stacked here. Uh, really well played by both players, in my opinion. Yeah, really well played, but also disgusting for Silverstein. I hope we see Silverstein at our final table next week. Because going over some of these hands, I have the feeling that that man deserves a little better than whatever happened to him on Sunday. That is going to do it for another pre-show from us. It is time for a favorite part of the evening. And obviously the part that you guys have been waiting for as well. And that is some live coverage of the High Roller Super Marines Week 9 final table. Nananoko, what is this? An uneven number? And that means that you get first choice as who is going to win it. Are you going to stick with your pick of the week? Or are you going to be lame <laughs> and switch it up now? I mean, like, I'm thinking about whom. Do I go for, like, my pick of the week, Ben CB, who's at the literal bottom? Or do I go for my my Australian brethren, right? Like, he's the chip leader. Like, I don't know, man. I, I like both of them a lot, to be honest, Roddy. I'm just trying to think. Oh, I got to pick soon. You know what? I'm going to just stick with my gun. I pick Ben CB, right? If I told people to bet on him, that's my pick. It's probably not going to work out, but I am. I do get good odds if he happens to win it. So Ben CB is my pick. What's your pick for today's uh, final table side bet of ours? Now I almost want to pick Cal Burns because then if he does win it, you're going to be extra salty. But now you know what? I you will need points, it. right? Yeah, yeah. I do need points. I haven't picked a winner yet in our official contest. I did pick seven second place guys, by the way. Nanoko's picks always go out first, but. I'll go for the chip leader then. Burns is a high roller crusher. He hasn't won it yet. He comes in with a pretty decent chip lead today. I don't think we can go too wrong with picking Cal Burns to win week nine of season two. All right. Well, here we go. Um, but it is a tough lineup. It's a lot of superstars, to be honest. Uh, how many multi how many past winners we got here? We got Elis. No, Elis did not win, did he? So we just Elis got Nicholas said in Ben CB. It's a lot of second place mm -hmm. dudes, kind of like yes. what you usually do. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably one of them is going to get second place again, but then one of them could very well win it too. We're obviously mostly excited to see how Ben CB is going to do, especially since he's won the tournament before. and He's a very well-known player. Ooh, Nicholas is set with Kings. Michael Watson with Ace Queen first hand of the night. Nanonoko, is this bad Niels Bear or can we, can we survive? Um, this is, this is awful. Uh, just, so you're good at calling the cards. Can the ace hit? Tell me that. I didn't see, but I don't believe anyone folded an ace, but I don't think it's going to hit. The thing is, Neil might actually call here. Neil strikes me as someone who is going to call. Look at Cal Burns as a chip leader. He's chatty. I love that. <laughs> what did he say? I missed it. Just good luck. He's like, good uh, luck, guys. It's fun, fun playing poker like with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, he's actually a really nice guy in person. You're right. Pocket sixes does call. We know the kings are going to squeeze. So does Watson continue the ace? It seems criminal, right, to fold the ace queen, but... I don't Especially know, against Nicholas, when there is that much money in the pot, everybody's opening from a late position or calling, like... I think Roddy and Nano, you guys are awesome. Oh, I think I found a new favorite player. I'm changing my pick. New is winning tonight. <laughs> Tom, yeah, maybe he satellite in, guys. Don't worry. He's going to play for the win. He's going to play all the pocket fours and pocket fives. That's awesome. All right. The Kings did, of course, three bet. Oh, Michael Watson does go all in. Well, here we go, guys. This is going to be a spicy, explosive first hand of the night. Can Michael Watson find an ace, or will the kings of Nicholas hold? So far, they are holding. Ooh. Aces and ace kings are king. odds now. Nope. That is not an ace, and it's not a king. Michael Watson is out in ninth place again. This is very similar vibes to the beginning of season one, where we saw him make the final table a couple of times, and he often went out early. Uh, that's just a really gross spot, I mean. What else do you want to say about it, Nana? <laughs> no, no, that's what Thomas Mulocker used to do, right? Keep getting, coming in, <laughs> get ninth, play one hand, literally. <laughs> Just out, happens. 
Yeah. Is there a world where if it's not Nicholas Estet who is uh, squeezing or tree bedding from the small blind, then we can get away from the ace queen? Like, what if that would have been a satellite winner? As Neil, our new favorite player of the high roll Super Million, picks up Jacks over here. Good luck, amigo. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it's it's hard to say. It's I don't think it's auto get in, but man, it feels bad if you you start folding that. But he's flat calling the Jacks. I don't fault him because of how deep they are. Um, and he skins under the gun. So we'll see how this goes. Tough board, huh? It's not the worst flop for uh, Queen Jack of Spades. I mean, you look at this, you see that spade, the back door is there. You obviously have three clean outs for the nuts, potentially four, because diamonds could very well be safe too. I don't really hate this as Queen Jack. Yeah, no, I mean, it's okay. He hasn't C bet the flop. I think he's going to go, who well, goes for a big bet, 75% pot on the turn. That puts a lot of pressure on two jacks. Because, like, if they bet 80K, like, two jacks probably comes along. But this one's hard to call. Nice bluff there. Well done. I also kind of like it. Because because you check the flop, it's almost like, man, I did too good over here, you know? Like, I'm, I'm going to let you try to make a move. And it's like, oh, it goes check, check. Well, now I want to get paid with my monster. Like, even aces could play like that in a, in a bizarre way. As Rodrigo is going to open up King Queen here. But this time it's Mr. Parsinen who's got the kings. Yeah, I like that first hand by our chip leader, Mr. Burns. What well, do you like these two kings bumping it up? Because that's what's happening. But Rodrigo... Is he suspicious? He's the Malta champion, right? Yes, the Battle of Malta main event. $550 times 1100 <laughs> Well, let's see. He hasn't folded yet. He might be thinking people are trying to pick on him because he doesn't normally play this mm -hmm. tournament. And then he get out of line. Yeah. Now. It is very easy to have a speech where you're like, okay, this is Elis Parson and he's in these spots all the time. He's just being aggressive because he's on the button. Like, I've got a good hand to fight back. But sometimes they have it. That's the thing. Oh, no. Sometimes wow. they have it, mate. Yeah, that's just good by <laughs> chips, right? Because Elis is just going to jam. Or... What I'm trying to say. If he had aces, he probably would call because we see do him do it in a pre show. But Kings, he's like, all right, let's just go for it. Like, he's still vulnerable I, a little bit, I'd... right? To the ace X. Mm hmm. I don't hate the move by Rodrigo at all. Like, I don't think this is something like, oh, wait, that's a mistake or anything. It's kind of cool because Elis could do this with one of these ace five suiteds or and even an ace jack off suit, that kind of stuff, right? They can free, but those kinds of hands too. It's just this mm -hmm. time he happened to have kings. This is one of these things. Yeah. King queen's a good hand to four bet bluff with out of position um, because, you know, it's still king high and you got blockers to the kings and queens. Yes, he still had kings. It is possible <laughs> when you have blockers, they still have it. But in theory, it's a good hand to four bet bluff with or like those suited ace X's are, are good as well. What I wondered on Nanooka is when are we going to get you a battle cruiser or a carrier? <laughs> I don't know. Probably never will, but um, I'm happy just looking at yours every stream. It's It just looks perfect. You know, it's really funny. I had somebody in my stream chatting to me uh, about you, and they're like, yeah, Nananooka used to be a pro StarCraft 2 player, right? And I'm like, no, not, not even remotely close. All right, we've got Ben with an 8-5 suited on the big blind. Makes the call, mm -hmm. and that is one hell of a flop for 8-5 of hearts. Yeah, it's a tricky one for two sevens because it's a good flop for two sevens, right? Um, but it could mm -hmm. get funny. Let's see what Ben does. Does he check raise? Does he check call? He's playing about twenty one big blinds. Check call standard, but I think check raise is okay too. Um, curious to see what how he approaches it. In some Vulnerable. moments, I would like check call, but after I Rodrigo, Rodrigo just lost so many chips, I actually think a check raise it would be very nice because Rodrigo is obviously not in the mood to go from 2.5 million to 900k, three hands into the final table. I actually think this is a really good moment to raise. Nice. Uh, seems like Ben agrees. I love it. Yeah, wow. And it's a tough spot for two sevens, man. Like, because Ben CB could have, like, you know, he could have a 10 himself, like an ace 10 type hand. Um, maybe he's got like two queens, you know, like, or two aces and slow playing and he wants to check, you know, they're like, he could have some big, nice play. I like it. Um, I, when I thought about it a little bit more, I do like the check raise just cause eight, five suited often over cards come and they multi barrel and maybe you accidentally fold the best hand and you're kind of short. So yeah, well done. I love it. Mm -hmm. 
Love it too. Nicholas the set makes it 88k with pocket eights under the gun. Probably not on purpose because he's most likely playing with big blinds, yeah. but that's kind of funny. Coincidence for sure. Oh, Ben with aces, but nobody else really has anything. Uh, yeah. Maybe Neil maybe... makes... <laughs> no, he's satellite winner. He's going to start playing this hand. I don't think so. Elis, what are we thinking about with three dudes offset? <laughs> um, he plays his best this game. This is where Ben sits there. Bank, you know? Yeah, Ben is like race, 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 race. He's like, oh, yeah, brutal. It is part of the game. Sometimes you get aces, and sometimes everyone else gets ten four off suit. This is really cross. I think this is even worse than like losing a small pot to a bad beat or an annoying river card. Like aces, it gets okay, folded no, to you on the button. And you're like, well, I always raise the button. Fight back, guys. And then they don't fight back. Even Nicholas Olstead in the big blind. If you expect a little bit of resistance from anyone, it has to be Nicholas. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not the worst. It says when you're in the big blind, but you've got like eight big blinds and they just give you a walk like something that just never happens yeah. you know, that's when you should be mega ultra tilted i mean it happens it happens in speed races quite often of course anyone who plays the speed races over a gg will have had those moments where you've got aces or you've got kings and you're on the big blind and you're like jam 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 and it's like why is no one jamming anyway this hand, as Nicholas raised it up, pre-flop with Jack-8, got called by King-Queen. I think bet on the flop, got called again, and now just drilled top pair on the turn. And poor Rodrigo, man. Everything is going wrong for him so far. King-Queen is his hand, right? Like, he's always committing chips, but uh, it's, it's awesome. 800k now, I believe. Maybe more. I think yeah. he's lost more. Than, yeah, oh, yeah, that hand. Started the final table with 2.2 .2 million, is down to 1.1 real quick. But in the pre show, he played the King Queen pretty good against uh, Aldemar. So, but the pre show yeah. is, yes, was two days ago, right? This is a new day. Mm -hmm. King Queen's no good no more. Ben is off to a solid start so far. Won his hand with 8 5. Didn't really win a whole lot of chips with the aces, but still picked up the blinds and now wins another one. Dario San Martino, the man who is always salty, according to Nanonoko, has a screen, but Elis Parsonen has queens in the small blind. Man, this this Elis Parsonen running good, huh? He got the two kings, got some extra action. Now he's got two queens in this spot. Let's see. Well, we know he's going to three bet it. Just curious, will Dario San Martino call? Would he fold? Would he jam? I don't know. It's tough. I'll tell you yeah. that. A good time to re disconnect. I'll tell you that. Like you just need a timeout here. <laughs> Get away from the hand. Oh, he's back. That's, that's not good. I think if they run it for all the chips, I do believe an ace is going to hit this time. I just have that feeling because <laughs> nobody else nice. had an ace. I, I love so. the analysis. No, let you. I mean, that is that is what is. How many cards is that? It's twelve cards that are not an ace, and then you're going to see all five cards. So likely that there's going to be an ace. What do you think about Elis always doing few after he three bets or four bet jams kings? The two times he did it. Phew, he's got it. he's had it. Yeah, I'm sure that he's gonna switch it up. He obviously knows that it takes a little while before they can see which hands he's had. He probably just likes the emote. And to be fair, few is one of the best emotes. It got added a lot later, but it's pretty perfect. Well, three way action and the flop is eight five eight rainbow. Cal Burns with ace jack, Neil with ace ten, Nicholas is set with king queen suited, but not a single spade on the board. Yeah, this is as dry as I get. No continuation bet. Let's see. So <laughs> ace jack is good, surprisingly. Let's see what Kale Burns does. He's going to try to get show this one down. I think ace ten wants to kind of show it down too. Everyone wants to show down their high cards, don't they? That's what I'm thinking. I don't think Nicholas believes King Queen is good here. No. He In a three way thinks, pot. Uh, someone's got ace high. <laughs> like, yeah. he's, he's pretty sure, I think. But it is. We'll see. 
It's hard to bluff at it though, right? Like, I guess he can represent like a pocket pair or something, but he's just done. Cal Burns could bet here, right? He's the most likely one to have a six. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I guess he thinks the ace jack has enough showdown value, and it does. If he had a weaker, like, and say he had an ace deuce, he probably would have went for it. But uh, if ace mm -hmm. jack, he still can win it when checks around. Very solid start for our chip leader, who's now up to almost 4 million chips. That's old fishing, the man who plays the 25k blade turbo. Because the regular 25k blade is just not exciting enough for him. He's going to open things up with pocket jacks on the button. You mean know they had blade turbos, like... No, neither thing. did I. Not a 25k one. <laughs> yeah. Must have been... Can't be recent, right? Like, I, don't... I look at the lobby here and there, right? But I've never seen that. Yeah. That sounds like a tournament that uh, Limitless would play, though. <laughs> that would for sure he's playing that. Nicholas is going to open things up one more time, this time with King Jack of Spades. It's actually kind of funny how uh, the three big stacks, like Cal Burns, Edith Parsonen, and now Nicholas is set as well, are quite spaced out, right? They're not close to each other. They're not next to each other. There's always a player in between. Yeah, true. Um, I guess the other person spaced out evenly like that way would be Benjamin Roll. So that means he will get a stack at some point, right? Like with your theory? Maybe not yeah, your theory, my theory. lovely final four. <laughs> If you wanna, if you want to give me a final four of Ben C B, Cal Burns, Elis Parson, and Nicholas Astet, I mean, I'd love to see Neil do well as he was so friendly and kind to us. But I think that'd be a very sexy top four. Uh oh, pocket, pocket fives. fives. Will it make a set? King Queen could flat call. We can. See. I, yeah. I feel like I'm free rolling this one, right? Good chance. I think you are, mate. Yeah, unless he folds, but I don't think he folds. Like He's going with the Eric, Eric Seidel opening. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Seidel did this all week. Uh, all week. There it is. Nana no goes on <laughs> yes, the board. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the fives do flop so, is set. We two one now. Is that right? Or three one? Three, three one. one mate. You hit two set. Yeah. You hit two sets the other day. That was brutal. I'll take it though. Yeah, I, I need something. This one was perfect for you. Like fives open of a big stack. King Queen makes a flat call. You get to see a flop guaranteed, and nobody else had a five. Like this was just a dream spot for the fives to flop yeah. a set. Dario Sammartino called, by the way. I'd like to go over to something that's slightly more relevant than our side bet. He just called there with King Queen. Yeah, I think he's sitting on 22 big blinds, so it felt like too much to reshove with. And uh, a little bit excessive, I guess. You could reshove it. It'd be perfectly fine. Oh, you mean on a flop? I meant on the flop. Yeah, on the flop. Yeah. Three flop, I'm okay he, with that. Had, but on the flop, he got... He had a spade, I think. I think he had a spade. Yeah. yeah, I think he's just looking to hit a king or queen. He got backdoor spades. If his opponent shows weakness on a turn, then you know he'll, he'll try and take it down. I think it's okay. All right. Opens ace king suited the following round. Ben CB calls with king queen, and Nicholas Asset could very well just tag along for the ride with jack 10 offsuit, and he does. Funny flop, nobody has anything. Yeah, just pure nothing. Let's see. Well, let's check to the button. Does Ben CB want to bet this flop? It's a tricky one to bet. Could represent some pocket pairs if he decides to do so, or like some 10-9. He's going to go for a third pot. Wow, okay. Do you think Dario considers calling this, or just maybe check fold? Because 99k is a lot for his stack. Like, he's yep. not sitting on 2 million where he can call Ace King High here. Um, it's actually pretty tough. Could he just jam and close his eyes? Makes the oh, call, drills the ace on the turn. Ay, ay, ay. But Ben does pick up the not flush draw, and he obviously has like the not blocker. Yeah. I don't think Ben will bet again, though, because he doesn't want to bet. Dario Sammartino, oh, he's going to go for a bet. Okay. 
I was going to say, it seems like his opponent's stack size is a type where he could just jam and like he might be forced to fold king clubs or something. He is going to go for mm -hmm. it. He's basically targeting the pocket eights, pocket sevens, pocket sixes, these types of hands, maybe like even like an eight, nine. These hands would have a, a lot of trouble calling to turn bet. Does get called. I think Ben CB knows this guy's got an ace by now. Mm hmm. You think Ben is going to try to make the PLO move and represent the nuts? I mean, but the thing is, your, your opponent's sitting on half a stack on the river. So, like, yeah. representing blocker is not as important here. Um, like, he might. Yeah, but okay, you say like that, right? But. Point. But this spot is also too big for Ben to just lose, man. Like, there is 826k in the middle, and he has 875k behind. He doesn't... He well, goes he's for it. Go for it. Holy God. Dario San Martino in a tough spot here. It's pretty tough, man. It's still tough with Ace King, tough. but he's sitting on half a stack with top air, top kicker. The problem is he's trying to think of bluffs, of course, right? And he's like, let's go logical, obvious hands. There really is any obvious bluffs here. You know, you really think about it. Ben, ben CB doesn't have many bluffs. On the flop. He bet on the flop. He bet on the turn and jams the river. If he had a king high flush, he would have played it like this. For sure. If he had even a set, he'd play it this way. Pocket nines, pocket fours always makes a set. Pocket threes. <laughs> Maybe he's got like an ace nine suited. Like he would still jam these hands on the river because the deuce is not a scary straight to be worried about. Um, wow, this range actually looks really strong here. Yep. Like right now, th this is the ultimate definition wow. of a crying call, and he doesn't make the crying call. Ben with the sixth move, the king of clubs is good enough to pull the trigger. Wow, wow, wow. That is one hell of a move, Benjamin Rolla. Insane. Wow. <laughs> That's, That's my pick, man. That's now Dario Sammartino is salty. <laughs> He's salty, salty mate, when sure he sees that, that one back. <laughs> oh, man. From a hand-reading point of view, I don't blame Dario Sammartino. It does seem like his opponent is no. really strong there. But you got to put the Ben CB factor in there, right? This guy is creative. Oh, man. I'm thinking what it you're thinking, It feels like you Roddy, beat is... nothing. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, do you think Dario should have jammed a turn? Because I feel like that's a question you would ask, you would ask me normally. Yeah, I, I would have liked to see him. Do... Yeah, like if you have it, you have it, right? Like th that kind of uh, logic. But like obviously the, the flush could have already been there. But I, I think you just have to jam because right now you leave yourself crippled anyway. And then you make life a little bit easier for yourself. Or maybe he calls off with like a combo or something. I don't know. But I, I think that's. I think that would have been a very reasonable move. Just check raise all in on the turn. I like it by Ben though, because yes. Wow, this is Jackson Kings, by the way. Uh oh. Yeah, this is brutal. But yeah, I was going to say, I do. I think I would have preferred jamming the turn, given how short he is. If he had like seven more big blinds or something, yeah, I definitely would just check all the, check all the turn, you know? But. There, I think he probably should have considered that. But anyways, Nicholas is that. Nicholas. <laughs> out of line. 10-9 suited. I guess maybe the Jacks can get out, right? Because we know Rodrigo's going to 4-bet. He's got to worry about a 3-bet and a 4-bet. And he raised under the gun. Mm -hmm. Maybe he can get away. Wow. Yeah, Snap nice fold. fold. Very nice fold by Old Fishing. But I do think that Nicholas is that really saved him there. Rodrigo obviously doesn't mind, even though one of the jacks was already folded. So if they would have ran it, it would have been real good for the Kings. Well, it's good regardless, but it would have been extra good. I, I still like it by Ben. I feel like you don't see that scenario too often in... I mean, you see it somewhat often in a limit, but I, I feel like in PLO it's super standard because everyone is always representing the nuts, whether they have the nuts or not. This is one of these rare spots where I think Ben really put that King of Clubs to work. Pretty sick. Yeah, this. Yeah, no, it's it's sick. Like the thing is, he knew his opponent had an ace. I'm pretty sure. Like, cause what what could check cut call that turn and flop, right? Like, has to be an ace, and he made the play. It's, and it's only for half the pot he shoved for. He didn't, you know what I mean? It's not like he jammed full pot. Mm -hmm. He jammed half the pot because that's all his opponent had.
Yeah, but that pot was also his entire stack, and that's why it was just like it was a difficult move to make for sure, because Dario Sammartino only had 10, 11 big blinds behind after that hand. But that pot was very important for Ben too, because it's literally if he wins it, he doubles his stack. So that's not something you can just casually give up on. Yeah, nah. Really well played. Love it. Ace King. I love this hand. <laughs> Is this going to save Imagine... Dario Sammartino, by the way? Yeah, well, Dario's thinking like, okay, here we go. Ace four suited. Then he's like, oh, maybe I won't be going with it. That is a big raise, by the way. So, yeah, it's uh, 11 big, big blinds almost. Like... <laughs> That's why Kale Burns is tough to play against. He's going to do it with bad hands, too, man. That's the thing. Like, and it, That's tough, right? Because... You know, you can't really call these three bet sizes too often. So, you know, put your pony in a shovel fold a lot of times. If Elis Parsinen opens here and it goes fold fold, do you think that Dario Sementino ever jams a six offsuit from the small blind? No, I don't think so. Um, yeah, he didn't think about it either. Against a middle position, it's, no, it's, you could be ahead, but you could. To easily be behind. You get a full round of hands too. Other stuff could happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone magically boss. Uh, you're in a small blind. Technically, the big blind still has a hand. It's not really a, a spot you were you'd be looking for. Man, I feel like they're all playing real fast tonight. By the way, <laughs> I'm not complaining. Like I think Daniel mm -hmm. agrees with that, right? Because Daniel is talking about people who play slow. I agree. I love it. Love it too. Elis does have a little disconnect. Hopefully not playing from Wi-Fi. He's definitely playing from Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> no. I refuse to believe that. Come on. He's rather he's young. Think, he's not a boomer. Like I think the boomers I'm maybe, but he's not a boomer. Seventy five percent of professional poker players play on Wi Fi. What do you think? So, no? I think uh, over the age of thirty, I will agree with you, but not over the age of twenty. Maybe from the twenty to twenty five, those guys are definitely on connection because they're younger, right? But like the original, yeah. like uh, they're just too used to playing Wi Fi, especially because a lot of these uh, guys they they travel, so they're used to playing Wi Fi, right? They're going to hotels and stuff like this, so they're like, and they're playing on laptops. Like no one even has a computer; everyone just playing on a laptop. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you can plug a cable into a laptop too, Nanoko. They can't be bothered. They don't even know how to pack. Like when they travel, or you know, they they don't know they gotta bring a couple clothes, some toothbrush, like and just they just know how to bring money. That's all they know how to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the toothbrush is important, the clothes are important, but I think a cable if you're playing ten thousand dollar online tournaments is also that should be really on the top of your list of priorities. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> One day. Nicholas has pocket eights again. Let's see if Ben C B decides to open things up with ace three of diamonds. I think Ben will open this for sure. Nicholas, probably flat called two eights. Type of hand where you could three bet it, but you're not looking to get it in. So you kind of waste a little bit if you do get four bet. And it's tough to play even in a three bet pot as the aggressor if you don't flop an eight, you know? So I like the call. Just kind of see what happens. So we're going to take a look at it. Ben does flop his ace and also has backdoor diamonds alive. Checks? What do you make of that? A lot of guys will check the weak aces on these boards. They feel like if they see bet all the aces, like it's just doesn't protect their checking range. So let's just say Ben CB's got like queens and kings, tens, jacks. He doesn't want to see bet those hands too much, so he wants to have some some top pairs too. And it makes sense to use your weaker aces um, to do that kind of protector range thing because if the ace kings, ace queens, you'd want to try to get value against other aces. Could Nicholas value on himself here? No, he doesn't. Because it almost felt like Ben like had a like guy a king. who value owns himself. <laughs> Once in every thousand hands, maybe. But I actually do believe that at one point you start believing your eights are good there because maybe Ben does have a king queen or a king jack, king ten kind of hand. Yeah. I mean, he probably thought there's a chance it's good, but it's just not worthy of betting. He's just like, please ship me the pot. And the dealer ships it the other way. He's like, fuck. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Rodrigo, even though he's had a pretty bumpy start to this final table, maybe after winning that hand with the Kings, he's got some confidence back. Wins another one, so he's already back to 1.6. And then it's not all too bad anymore, considering the fact that he started with 2.2. He needs to stick with the good hands, right? See, he wins ships with pocket kings and stuff like that. And he loses hands with the king-queen offsuit. Like, if I get double king-queen, I just, just sit out. I don't know. <laughs> I like how Burns is showing his seven dudes. He's like, I'm not afraid of you, Nicholas. Just this time, I really couldn't do anything. That's the way that I interpreted that. Like when he folds his big blinds and he shows the seven dudes, he's like, hey man, I want to fight back. Just not this time, but next time. <laughs> I'm just happy Elis Parson and, and Kale Burns are using emojis, the, the client, for what it's supposed to be. Everyone else is just playing for real money. Woohoo. Now, this is going to be it, right? Dario Sermatino has, has six big blinds, has a seven offsuit. You don't love it, but it's still an ace, and Elis has been opening a lot. So you hope you're up against those king queens, king jack, queen jack suited. Yeah, all he's of just that stuff. he's just wondering if he should consider stopping going instead, um, which can be reasonable. I um, just because maybe you get some equity to fold, but uh, yeah, obviously this is fine. Here we go. A7 is still good, right. but King Queen picks up extra outs. Needs a King, Jack, any paint basically. Just paint, guys. That is not paint. That means Dario San Martino gets a double up. He's back to 700k. 12. 14 big blinds, actually. You think he's feeling good now? No, he's pissed. <laughs> he doesn't know yet, right? He got bluffed. He will know oh, soon. Oh, no, but. Though. It, yeah. Yeah, but he's already pissed. It's just not been going well. He started the final table with 1.3 million. Now he just wins an all-in. Not a flip, but somewhat close to a flip. And he's at 700k. You know, if he would have done nothing, he would have had more chips than what he currently has. Of course he's pissed, then Anoka. Come on. The question is, how long has he been pissed? Has it been since the main event? Second place. I don't even know what year it is anymore. <laughs> 29, 18, right? 2018? 17. Pretty recent, roughly. Camp 17 seems far, but maybe you're right. I actually don't know. I feel like it's three years ago, though, if I had to guess. Yeah, yeah. I think I would say WSOP main event 2019. That's what I would say. Uh, Wikipedia. Yeah, 2019 highest ITM finish main event. 2019. What did I say? 18 or 19? Ah, I said everything. You said 19. Yeah. You said 17 first, and then you realize how retarded that was. Now, so, yeah. You're back. <laughs> You're not allowed to say that word anymore. Cancelled. Yeah, Get that, that Anoko off. The my street. bad. Sorry. I just <laughs> wanted. I, that, that, was, that was my mistake. It was a bad choice of words. My bad, Rowdy. I'll, I'll let it slide. I know that I say a lot of stupid things, so sometimes that is the first thing you can think of. But let's go with something else, Nano. Just call me a baboon in the future, or a buffoon, or a donkey. All of these things will qualify. Let's go for it. So what happened here? Checking? Was there a bet anywhere? Mm -hmm. Neil bet. picks up a pot. That is what happens. And he's back to 1.8 million, so that's kind of nice. All righty. Bucket nines. Such a boomer, Nenonoko. <laughs> no action, I guess. Do you just open rip this? You probably do, right? Yeah. 13 picks. Uh, hmm, you could go either way. I don't know. He's going to rip it. If it wasn't a final table, I think you probably definitely just raise. You want to try to get some action. And it's your best chance of getting double up, you know? Final table, I can you know understand preserving the tournament life a little bit more makes makes sense. I'm okay with yeah. it. Same, same. Elis Parisinen has ace four offset on the gun. He's gonna let it go. Hell burns still over four million chippies. He's gonna be the one opening it up with queen ten. Maybe Neil has some confidence after winning that last spot. He has ace jack offset. I do feel that Neil is going to call a lot. I'd love to see him three better hand like this once on the button, especially against the chip leader open. I think this would be a good moment to do so. 
Yeah, I think so too, Again, especially against chip leaders. Um, he'll get more credit, I believe. And let's just say he passed up this ace jack, you know. He's listening to our stream. Oh, no, he's going for it. I was going to say, because he definitely wants to make this move in the future. I love it. Neil's here to play. He's here to make good decisions, right? Like, he maybe won't play every spot, but uh, I, no, I really love this. Especially against a chip leader. Yeah, no. This is a correct call. Correct move. And he picks up some chips, so he's back to 2 million. He's a fan of the show, and we are a fan of that 3-bet, mate. Keep it up. Do you think Elis Parsonen gets a walk here? Nicholas is dead. Is he going to do it? Nope. Or Rodrigo might limp, though. He's kind of feisty. But, no, all right. He's out. Never yeah. mind. We're all kind of feisty until we have 7 4 offset in the small blind against the PLO mastermind. <laughs> That's when the feistiness goes away real quick, Nano. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let's see. He got pocket tens. This guy is he going to hit every pocket pair in the deck today. He didn't have aces yet. <laughs> oh, he's got kings. He's got uh, queens, right? Tens. Mm -hmm. Let's see what he does. Just calls. Mm. I think that he's not interested in playing for stacks. No, that is a lovely flop, though. You think? Um, he's out of position though, so I don't think he ever check raises flop. Even okay, is that a good turn, or what? You think? <laughs> is this a good turn for Elis though? Mm, he might not think it's the worst card. Definitely gonna call here. Try to pick up some uh, bets against the late continuation bets. Curious to see how the river plays out though. And he's got the pocket tens, but what are you gonna do? Represent ten seven? <laughs> queen From 10? the small blind. Nah. Good luck. Yeah. Doing queen ten <laughs> ten seven to represent. Offset. This is really Good annoying time, because there is one card on this board that you don't like with your tens here, and you're like, uh, oh, but it's a pretty big bet. It's a little over six big blinds. No no Stop. obvious draws too. So like See if there's a flush draw, then maybe you can try and pick that off. But no, there isn't. Um, he used to be trying to pick off like a king queen a lot of times, really. Mm -hmm. Wow, Good I love it. Be Good solid. Fold. Uh, you can also say though, if you want to be critical, he could have three bet the tens from the small blind. And I know you already said he doesn't want to play for stacks, but if he does three bet the tens on the small blind. And even if he don't, does get called by King Jack, if he bets on that 993 flop, King Jack will let it go immediately. So that was definitely probably a way for Elis to win that hand. But yeah, fall on no, the I mean, regardless. you win the pot more often when you three bet the hand like that. It's just that when sometimes you, you make things worse sometimes, right? Like there's pros and cons both ways. There really is no wrong way to play it. Um, so I don't. I don't think it's a mistake uh, to flat call, given how deep they are. It's just that sometimes you're going to lose lose the pot when you shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I didn't use the word mistake. I'd never used the word mistake with Elis Parson. And for a split second, I was kind of worried that old fishing was going to go a little ham with his ace deuce offside uh, there in the small blind. But he just let it go, so he lost the bare minimum against the queens of Cal Burns. Just because he's from Macau, you think he's going to get out of line? Yeah, sometimes they just like, all right, I have an ace in the small blind versus the big blind. You're the chip leader. If I limp, you're going to punish me. Let's just jam. <laughs> and then you get called with queens. You're like, damn it. Should not have done that. Okay. Pocket fives. Oh, you kneel out of my book. <laughs> Does he not know about our little side bet? He should be risking his chips for my entertainment. Pocket fives under the gun, table full of absolute monsters. I think I'm okay with that fault. <laughs> I like this three bet though from Kale Burns, targeting a big stack. Nicholas stack came and called Queen Jack suited out of position. Well done. Mm -hmm. My man, old fishing hasn't won a hand yet, has he? No. 
You also got dealt pocket jacks too. <laughs> Had to fold it. Mm -hmm. Although he did only invest two big ones uh -oh. in that one. Somehow. Ace king and queens, no, 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 go. Fireworks. Um, this is a big. This is a pot to find him over Kale Burns here, right. and your little side bet. Woo. But I, I think this is going in. Rodrigo obviously wants to hit. Tell me, Ace King predictions. What what's going on? I think Ace King hits, but a Queen could hit too. They might all hit. They might hit an Ace. They might hit a King. They might hit a Queen. Someone is gonna hit something. No, 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 Kel. Let's see what it is. So far, it's only a jack. No one hits anything. No one hits anything. Rodrigo needs an ace or a king on the river. Or he is eliminated. Could be an ace. Could be an ace. It's oh! the ace of spades on the river. Wow. 3.1 million tall. chips. And, mate, that is a river card that made him go from either out in eighth place. Now he's the chip leader of the table. How insane is that? Yeah, it's super insane. That's just brutal for our man, Kale Burns, too. Like, I was I kind of wanted to see him hold the hand. I felt like he deserves a deep run. Great player. Brutal. But, you know, you just got to shake it off. He's still got 40 big blinds to play with. Just, that's, that's Boker. That's what your friend likes to say, right? That's not, I mean, that's not just my friend. That's everyone, right? And no one likes that saying. Like, I feel like no one has ever liked that saying. That's Boker. I like this flop for Nicholas Estet. I like it a lot more than I should like it, wow. but I'm absolutely in love with it. He is behind now as Rodrigo just refuses to give up on anything on the flop. Drills the ace on the turn. But I still like this hand for Nicholas. Yeah, but we're... <laughs> you still like it when the ace turns. Like, Rodrigo, definitely going to continue. Uh, but these Brazilians are feisty, man. Like, they, they just fight for it. And we've never seen him, but... It makes sense why you won the Battle of Malta main event. Oh, you like that flop. He freaking drilled. How did you still like the Jack-8 on the turn? I don't understand. I don't know. Well, you look at Nicholas's profile. You click on his trophy case. You keep on scrolling. And then you see him flop open-enders. And you know he's going to run pure. And this is the absolute best run out. Now, I think there is a way that Rodrigo can get away from this. Okay, this is wow. too much. This is greedy. Yeah. This is, I hope you've got two pair. Call me. Give me all the I hope chips. I you have tens. Uh, <laughs> not, not, probably not tens, but like a ace nine or something. Like, this is, this is greedy. This is pure greed. He should just, like, he can still go for a big bet, like 1.2 million. Allow himself to still get called by some ace -Xs. Maybe he gets looked up still, but like, I don't think so. Because Rodrigo just got these chips. You know how people don't like to lose the chips they just got. Nicholas wins this, of course. He is, well, he is a nil chip leader, regardless of what happens. The big question is by how many. I mean, Rodrigo should let this go, even though it may not feel totally right to him. And you hate to see it, but this would be a pretty insane call to make. Like, what do you beat other than yeah. Queen Jack? Like, well. Let's just say Nixon says bet sizing obviously is very polarized. He's not he wouldn't be up against like an ace king, an ace queen very often. A lot of guys just don't do this 1.5x shove uh with those hands. So obviously it's nut hands or nothing. Great fold. I loved it. I kind of yeah. feel like Nicholas said deserved that little bit of punishment for that greed there. It just seemed way too greedy. Mm-hmm. I uh, actually kind of sad for Rodrigo, who did play his hand very well. Called on the flop was right. Called a big bet on the turn. And even with ace four on that turn, not something that you're necessarily in love with, but he was right there too. As Nicholas drilled the cleanest river he could possibly find. Yeah, no, that's mighty impressive. But even the flop call was tough, man. Like calling yeah. ace four on 10, nine, three, or whatever the third card was is. It's not easy. Look at this. Nice play from you. Let's see. Rodrigo's feisty, though, right? Do you feel like he's going to continue with the Jack-9 offsuit? Yeah. He might just call here because he might just be like, Jack-9 can flop all right. <laughs> I, I think mean, he will does, call this. Just, yeah, single raise. I mean. Yeah. Wow, oh my God. raise. Rodrigo is... This guy is tough. 
as tough as nails, man. This guy, like, like usually people take a little break and then they start fighting. This guy just keeps it up. I love the Brazilian players. They really are just phenomenal to watch. Like they, they just always find ways to fight. Wow. Well done. And he gets him to fold. That's honestly quite mental. He's playing uh, very well. If you're talking about a satellite winner, now he did play the 1K satellite. He didn't get in through the $500 satellite, but Rodrigo is here just enjoying his roller coaster ride. Started with 2.2 million. You think he could cruise? Nope. Drop down, went back up, dropped down again, got that big double, then lost the big pot, and he's just immediately back in the mix the following round, battling it out with Elis in a small blind, big blind battle. Jack nine, what a play. Yeah. That's a super cool play. I loved it. Ben CB. He's been quiet ever since that big bluff. What do you make of that owl of Ben CB, the avatar? Is that a default avatar? Like that you can just yeah, select on is. GG? I have no idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of the default it's ones. Just like... Asked his girlfriend to pick an avatar she liked, I'm guessing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little I'm funny because right, he could it. add his like raise your edge logo as his avatar or something, yeah. but he chooses to just pick an owl. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> not a sellout. <laughs> Even if he owns yeah. the company, so he's not selling out, but <laughs> I like it. Aces for Nicholas Ostet. So this guy, Nicholas, I had an opportunity to pick him. And I skipped him, and now he's chip leading. Yeah, he made that look so easy. We're 46 minutes in. And we're like, oh yeah, everything is back to normal. Our second best performing player of the entire first season of the High Roller Super Millions is chip leading the final table of week nine. No one should be surprised yet. Somehow, Nenonoko and Roddy, despite the fact that we've been here for 65 weeks in a row, are surprised. <laughs> and we didn't pick him. It's pretty stupid. <laughs> I know. It's just like, we want to pick our other favorite. You love your, your PLO master. You know, I love me some Ben CV. Just skip him. Oh, you didn't pick all PLO in for you Mr. Mr. Samatino? You went chip leader. Yeah. Yeah. This is an easy all in for Dario. Mm-hmm. Should just get it through. I don't think Cal. I mean, let's not forget that Cal Burns no longer has four million chips, so it's not like we can just dust away three hundred and eighty thousand additional chips. Hmm. Well, let's think. The big one's now sixty k. I thought it was. I didn't realize it had gone up. So he's getting. He'd be getting a good price with his hand. The question is, is it worth it at a final table? Um, it's not. So he's laid down. I think if he still had 3.5 million or 4 million, I think he can justify it. But right now, that would really hurt him, man. Drop to 2.1. Yeah, he could put you in that 30 big blind thing. And, you know, say you lose another pod, like, then you you become an all in or fold player. Something you kind of want to avoid if you can. Mm -hmm. Especially if Matthias I being a the table. Oh, no, wait, guys. That's just a personal trauma from me. Playing all in or fault over at the GG client. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen Matthias I being in our final table in forever. Remember, he was a final yeah. table everything in the beginning? Mm -hmm. He's Vanished. never won it, right? Did, it, did he ever win it? I don't think he ever won. No, he lost to Michael Adamo. In the, one of his first editions, and he he tried to yeah. call Adamo King High on an ace high yeah. board, three barrels, <laughs> and Adamo <laughs> hit the gut shot straight with like a five three offsuit or something crappy. It's mm -hmm. funny. Pair fours. Yeah. Matthias Eibinger must be one of the players with the most final tables. Ooh, can we get a set on the board for Roddy? The pocket fives made a set, but Rodrigo. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness, mate. That's such I was a like, good spot to pocket call. fours for Rodrigo. Kind of sounds like Roddy. It's pretty close. I think you guys are Wait, that that was making such a, a connection. Good spot to call as well. 
Cal Burns, he's opening everything. He's on tilt, okay? He had four million chips. You rivet him. This was the nail in the coffin. You drill that four, you get him out of there. <laughs> Yeah, I really like Fox hitting that set today because feels like it's the stars have to align so perfectly for these guys to play with a pocket pair that little. Do you think that Mr. Burns defends his big blind with King 8 offset? Yes. Was well, the answer yes before he called as well? Yeah. That's yes. Okay. Um... Yeah, it's just good high card hand, deep stacks. Yeah, see, I see him betting the turn, even though it won't work. Uh, he can get, you know, pretty much all day size to fold. It's going real small here. Problem here now is for him is he's probably going to feel obligated to bet the river because he's going to think some ace, a lot of ace highs will call this. I don't even know how many percent that is. It's real small though. Um, I guess Elis might raise. He might be thinking there's a lot of draws. This bet is so small. Okay, never mind. I think Kale has to fire. I know it's not going to work, but... If he wants to win this, I feel like he needs to overbet the pot. Yeah. He's just wondering, like, did I really bet so small on the turn just to overbet? The... So he's targeting ace high right now yeah. um, with that bet. I think Elias was really happy to see that sizing on the river. He's like, oh, that's not even a decision. I'm just going to call. If you have it, you have it, mate. Good luck. Have fun. So the man who came in as chip leader loses a few more chips. Elias gets a couple back after he gave some to Rodrigo in that small blind, big blind battle. We have Old Fishing, who I really don't think has won a hand yet today. I do think he's going to win this one. <laughs> that is one. That's actually uh, almost a bit of a shame, if you ask me, because he hasn't won a single hand yet. Now he just jams from the button. Just making sure he wins the pot. Sometimes that's what you gotta yeah. do. Yeah. It, you can also maybe say that if he raises, Dario Sammartino is so sure that Dario is gonna reach jam a lot on him, but that's actually something you kind of want anyway there with your ace queen suited. So I don't really know. I guess what do you on make the of that player? Other side is I mean like, so let's just say he min raises. Dario's got the stack size actually can defend quite wide because the shortest stack. Like, because the stack to pot ratio is so small, it's pretty easy for him to play post lobby flop pair. You just check raise all in. So, yeah. if old fishing is like, well, I don't want to come 987, and then what? Do I check or bet the flop and get jammed on? Like, he's just kind of like cut all that out. Um, Ace Queen suit. I, I think it's okay. I probably would raise that hand and then like jam more like an Ace 10. Something uh, mm -hmm. not as good, but I don't think it's the worst play by any means. No, I mean Just the worst play would have been folding he... chips. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, Cal Ooh. Burns could lose oh. a few more chips here as he opens his up with Ace Jack, but we have Ben C B on the button with Ace King offset. Ben, oh man, it's annoying. Nineteen big blind though. Nah. When your stack has shrunk, uh, you nice uh, cut show, out a man. little bit there for me, but <laughs> oh, yeah, good. <laughs> I think I think we all got what you were trying to say. We are two minutes away from our first break of the evening. It's been a relatively exciting first hour where we lost Michael Watson in the very first hand. That was obviously quite unfortunate for him. What was it again? Ace Queen against Kings or something, right? For a cent? Yep. Instead, Kings. So, yeah, that's how he got started. Pocket 10. You're still a robot right. for me, so but we'll work off. on that. You know what? You just handle King it Jack. until the break. All right. I'll do my best. King Jack suited opens. We have a King Jack on the big blind as well. Wow. This is actually kind of a bad beat for Ben. They both have King Jack and Old Fishing still drills the king. And if you have tens here, you don't really hate this flop too much. Yeah, he's still going to call, though. But, I mean, I guess he kind of deserved it a little bit for not three betting the hand. You know, like, you can't feel too bad for the two tens in this spot. I always feel bad for Ben if he doesn't win. 
Old fishing is like, all right, I won the previous end. I want to win another one. And he does. He gets Ben to snap fall the tens there. And it's obviously kind of a painful loss for Ben CB. As Kel Burns, the man who was at Chipley, the once upon a time has aces. Will Nicholas Ostead get out of line with ace four on the button and a knocker? Uh, probably not. Like people like to do this from the blinds more, and they use, they like the ace five just like a lot more. Just otherwise, oh. I guess their frequency is way too high. Good, good flop. Fireworks. Deep stack. Kind of flop. Yeah. I don't know if fireworks is the right word, but something working for sure. <laughs> hmm. That is actually uh. A pretty nice turn for Cal Burns. Elis Parson will no longer take the lead with another 8. He needs to hit a 10 or a 9. The running diamonds are dead too. Parson probably thinks he's got the best hand here. Yeah, for sure he does. Um, that card he really hates. Is he going to represent the six now? <laughs> well, he's just thinking about block betting. Yeah. Okay, obviously. This I think is... that's just a call for aces, right? Like, I think raising. I mean, raising yeah. would be the correct play, but I think just calling here makes a lot more sense. Yeah, for sure. You can be up against eight, nine. You can be up against six. You could be up against a boat. Um, raising beat. Really unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Folding would be criminal. This is <laughs> this is going to be our final hand of the first hour. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And Cal Burns does just make the call. The correct play there with the Aces wins 1.2 million chips in the final hand before the break. And that means that he can feel a little bit better about this first hour. Maybe not as good as it should have been, but it was still pretty fun. And then Anoko and I are going to take a couple of minutes for ourselves. And we'll see you guys in 4 minutes and 40 seconds, where we continue the final table of Week 9, Season 2, High Roller Super Millions. All right, Brent, we are running it back this year. The Colossus, the $400 buy-in. The $3 million guarantee, all the day one flights in the lobby and day two coming up on Sunday. You fired up for this one? Of course I am, Jeff. The Colossus, baby. Mm. Hi, I'm the new Daniel Negreanu. And I'm the old Daniel Negreanu. We both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I gotta ask, man, what uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this motherfucking hand. This motherfucker is calling the freaking turn with this piece of freaking hand. Freaking absurd. Whatever. I, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG, poker star. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back to our second hour, where we are still with eight players for this final table. We've got a couple of fun hands here. Cal Burns is going to open things up with Jack Nine. We've got Ace Queen and Ace Queen. I actually kind of wonder what Neil is going to do here, because Dario Sementino is obviously going to jam. Hmm, yeah, it'd be a pretty tough spot. Um, oh, I feel like he should call the Ace Queen and fold for further action. Um. Yeah, he lays it down. I don't blame him, but like, mm -hmm. I don't know. KO's been open a lot, so Dario's got more incentive to reshove uh, even hands like Ace Jack and Ace Den. It's okay, though. Yeah. I think it's a tough spot. Like, there are some moments there where you will absolutely be crushed, and then you feel silly. So it sucks, but it's not the end of the world. He probably wouldn't have won the hand anyway. Would have won a couple chips, but. Ooh, pocket four is in the pocket small blind. <laughs> ah, good job, Nicholas. Well, I don't know. Old Fishy maybe G comes along. He's some cow people don't like to fold. You know, they like to see some flops. Ah, he folds. Never mind. Yeah, they all play the same now. <laughs> Cal Burns may call. Pocket fours would not have made a set. Neither player flops anything, but this is obviously a bit better for Nicholas than it is for Cal Burns. I think it's an easy C bet. There we go. You don't even need to bet too much. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well done, Nicholas. The blinds go up again. Of course, the blinds go up based on the amount of hands we play. You guys can see that in the top left side of the final table. It does not go up over time. 20 hands, they will go up again. Even is this probably on Wi-Fi because he keeps having these little disconnects and then he's back. I'm so disappointed. Yeah. It's definitely his internet connection because no one else is disconnecting. One more time, of course, guys. Currently, the WSOP main event uh, day ones are running, the online version. 5K buy-in. There are quite a few flights. Everyone can try three times, but you can only try every flight one time. They are currently running, I believe, once a day in total. You can try three times, though. You cannot try three times in one flight. And then later this week, we'll continue the 10K heads up final four with a couple of very fun players. Adrian Mateus is left. Alex Ponakov is left. And that will be broadcasted over at ggpoker.tv by Norman Chad and Lon McGurn. It's pretty impressive to know that two of our guys that regularly play those Super Millions mm -hmm. has reached that uh, heads up. And I believe they're on opposite sides of the bracket. So technically, they can hit each other up in the, in the finals. I mean, that'd be pretty cool to watch. Mm -hmm. I tune in. I think I bet on Alex Ponikovs. He's been... Uh, but Mateo says he won impressed me at... millions before. Right? Yeah. I know he's been to our final table a lot. I don't know if he's won. I know... Actually, Adrian Mateus won once, no? Yeah, he did win. I remember thinking he didn't yeah. win, and then I got corrected, uh, maybe by you or by yeah. production, that he did win. Probably both. <laughs> Cal Burns still has a pair of sevens. It's a funny run out here with four diamonds on the board. Yeah, um, that kind of makes the ace-eight want to stab, in my opinion. Like, you can't expect that ace-eight to win. Your opponent would have a tough time calling. Looks like he is going to just check. All right, friendly game. <laughs> the man who came in to this final table as chip leader wins a few more and he's actually back to 2.7 million he started the night with 3.4 so that's not that bad but i'm sure that he is still a little upset about not being up to 6 million he could have just avoided that ace of spades on the river wow wow just ripping okay. in just closing everyone out i like this Solver, that's taking solver all the way, uh, right? <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You say you like this, but what if Neil wakes up with kings there and like, come on? Do you still he like? He doesn't it think Neil's calling anything besides like queens plus and ace king plus. So you know, if that's yeah. the range, they're probably gonna fold everything. But anyways, what do you think? Tens, three bet. I think he feels like a three betting type of player. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I take it back. Sevens could call here. Yeah? For this price and the positions, I like it. You only got to worry about one dude behind you to change the action. Yeah, but call. Easy to Nicholas hand the play doesn't too. wanna. Mm -hmm. 
Nicholas doesn't strike me as a guy. Oh, wow, he folds the sevens. Ooh. Well, perhaps that was the correct decision. That is a nice flop for Mr. Parasinen. And not a very nice one for the pocket tens. I actually think I would have liked to call the sevens there because I don't see Nicholas get too out of line against the early position open and then two callers. Like, that doesn't seem like an ideal squeeze spot to me. Yeah, I guess on the flip side, Neil's just thinking, look, if I don't hit a set, I'm not playing. And he just wants to kind of keep his stack size looking at the guys next to him, like Dario and Benjamin CB, who are quite short. So he's just like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to, let's allow me to survive longer, you know? But I do agree. I probably would call there. I think that spot seems pretty good, especially the price. But I can see why he did it, I guess. Wow, the 10 call again. The run out is a funny one. As we make a little wheel, Elis Parson was betting his ace king. He probably thinks that's a really bad river card for him because they may chop sometimes chop. now, but we know yeah. that he ain't chopping at all. I agree because he can be up against like ace four, you know, these types of hand, ace three suited. Um, look, Elis is thinking, look, I can't get called by worse. Well, you know, I can't really get a hand to bluff me either. So what does he do? Does he block that? Does he pot control? I don't know. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, maybe like, three or four folding, just... or everything. Yeah, I, I just... don't know. It's hard to ever get called by anything, right? If you bet, even if you bet three hundred k, like, what do you think? A king queen's gonna call you? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a weird spot. It is a weird spot. Elis is taking his time. We know that he's not going to... Well, he decides to check. Yeah, I guess he's... There's an odd chance that his opponent turns his hand to blood. And to be fair, tens is one of those hands where it's unlikely it's ever good, given how it's played so far. Maybe Kale Burns just stabs now, thinking he's up against like a king-queen. And king-queen can't call this. No, um, he knows if he checks, he's, he just can't win. You're just wondering, will a hand fold? Maybe the long tank no. from Elis tricked him, but nah, mm -hmm. yeah, nice check. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate the check actually because of everything that you said before. He decided to check. I think it can make some sense, but didn't work quite work out. Still, a nice spot though for Elis Parsinen. Closes in on three million chips again. Nicholas has said is still a chip leader, and this time he's got pocket jacks in the small blind. Life is good being Nicholas, isn't it? He may have had a rough first eight weeks of season two, but now that I look at him tonight at the final table in week nine, I look at the hands he's getting, I look at the spots he's facing. Life is good being Nicholas instead. Yeah. I mean, maybe he, he cash in season two. Do you know? I know he didn't find table. No, it's at zero. Oh, no, it's okay. at zero. So that... Got it. Yeah, that's a little brutal. Yeah. No, that's why I was surprised when you said, like, oh, you know, it's it's been only nine weeks, so we can't really blame him. And I was like, well, not a single cash. Like, okay, no final table. That kind of stuff happens. Of course, we can expect him to final table every week. But it's not like Nicholas only is ever in for one bullet, right? Like, he's in for quite a few bullets every now and then. So then eight weeks, no cash. That does start adding up, even for Nicholas. Nicholas is like a... He's like a two bullet kind of guy, you know, like he's not one of those four minimum every single tournament. You know, on average, I think Nicholas is in for two, but then he will always rebuy to the maximum. He won't like, yeah, he won't just be like, you know what? Today is not my day. He's Spartan and has a six offsuit on the big blind. He's thinking about making one of those uh, funny three bets with the ace X offsuit. He is nice. Picking mm -hmm. on the satellite winner. Poor Neil, because he hasn't really opened a whole lot yet. So it's actually kind of annoying for him that Elis makes his play. Yeah, they're picking on him. Because, like, when he gets folded to you with this stack size, like, you're still going to open hands in the cutoff. You're just knowing that you should. Like, you know, like, he hasn't folded yet. He's suspicious as hell, isn't he? Let's not forget that earlier Elis made a move on Rodrigo as well, and then Rodrigo went for the three. Wow. But oh my God, Neil! 
He picks up on it. That is a move and a half. Well done. Wow. Sick. That is sick. Super sick. Like. He's, wow. Neo's been watching the see he said he loves he thinks we do a good job so he knows these guys love those ace rags right those ace five three betting from the blinds like he, he must have watched a lot of streams well done Neo. really hats off to him on that one because that was not yeah. an easy play you gotta look at the stack size dude <laughs> was playing like 20 big blinds when he opened mm -hmm. oh, that's an insane play absolutely insane play very well done and it is poison and just can't really get off to that two point something million every time he closes in on three he loses a couple chips again this is a beautiful flop by the way for old fishing flop stop pair and the queen high flush draw you think he just gets excited and just rips it in now like he's been ripping them pots real quick oh he's he's raising it up oh man he is excited we can agree to that will nicholas make a misstep and just think this guy's on a making a play nice fold Mm -hmm. Shorty's fighting back. It's kind of funny how we lost Michael Watson in our very first hand of the evening. And now, after one hour and 12 minutes of play, we haven't lost an additional player yet. Yeah, Mike Watson showed up for, for that hand. Yeah, she had an okay stack to start the final table. 25 big blinds, I think. Yeah, 26. I mean, ace queen, it's Nicholas three betting you. I don't blame him. No one blames him. K.O. Burns, he's out. I love how every single time Elas makes not a misstep, but tries to make a move and it doesn't work out. He loses a couple of chips. He just wins them back immediately, like the next hand or two hands after. But he's just always hard stuck between 2.3 and 2.9 million chips. Yeah, he doesn't get dealt enough hands after to be on tilt. He's like, oh, back to where I was. All good. Hmm. Funny check with King Queen on that point. Uh, guess he's just kind of controlling the pot, and maybe his opponent will take a stab. And you can see Nicholas that I'm surprised he hasn't tried to flop or turn. It's really like it's not happening but it's really hard to check one more time when another diamond rolls off like you don't want to let some stupid diamond rolls off on a river too so Elis decides to go for a tiny bet but it's good enough a little less than two big blinds he picks this one up he's back to 2.6 2.7 million ben is also just like... kind of stuck at his 1 million chips now for uh, quite some time already I feel like everyone's getting king queen today, or is it just me? <laughs> nice. We've seen a lot of king queen. Suited, offsuit. And king jack, too, to be fair. We've seen a lot of king jack. I think Dario probably will have to call if the king ain't suited here. It's suited. Yes, it's three way. You don't like to be three way, but I think it's, I think it's too good to fold. Hmm. I feel like the first one to bet wins here. But who is going to be the first one to bet? That's it's Nicholas. Nicholas. It's always yeah. Nicholas. Yeah. <laughs> See betting machine. Mm -hmm. His timing is really good. It's kind of scary, actually. I feel like how good Nicholas is in avoiding trouble and how when he's betting like super marginal hands or where he just doesn't have anything, but Nobody else is anything either. I think you have to let this go, even if you're banned. Like 7-5 can flop all right, but more often than not, you're just going to hate it. You don't want to bust yet. That one big blind is actually very meaningful. Look. Like Ben CB would not disappoint me. I picked him to win it. He's in the bottom. He's going to just... Timing just works out for that guy. He's been our Fountain Tail many times. He's gotten good scores, okay? And he usually comes in with, like, no stack. So <laughs> I'm just 
<laughs> patiently waiting, watching people play. Dario decides to go all in here with his ace five offsuit from the button. Makes a lot of sense. I don't think Ben can do anything about it. And neither can Neil. Neil definitely impressing us with that crazy ace eight of clubs move on Nilis Porcinen. One of the highlights yeah, no, of the evening so far. Dario crazy. can just sorry. Dario can just jam again here. And he will. It's quite big. He just won 380,000 chips without having to see a flop. That's like a double up for him. Mm -hmm. So, Roddy, have you played any other uh, World Series events? Or is it just a Palossus? I have only played a Palossus. Maybe we'll try some more. But that was a pretty magical run for me. I have never been that close to winning a bracelet. And I was actually thinking back of it. I'm like, oh, man. Because I had this one hand that was pretty deep in, which I felt like I played all right. I don't remember the exact details anymore. But I had queens, and king-queen was the nuts. And it was way more in my range than it was in my opponent's range. So I bet real big, and he check-called. And there were two clubs on the board, and I had no clubs. And then the river rolled off, and it was like a uh, low club. So the flush got there. And he just bombed into me for 24 big blinds. And I was like, oh, no, I wish I didn't have made the move with the queens because that was actually a really pricey pot for me. Because that made me go from an all right stack to a short stack. Anyway, let's forget about that. We've no. got Ben CB with pocket tens and Neil with ace king. We're off to the horses. And I kind of think that ace king is, is in good spot here, Nananoko. I have an ace king feeling here for Mr. Neil. Oh, yeah, Neil loves you too, right? And Ben CB is my pick. Oh, man. Well, we know Neil should play this hand. Just wondering if he should jam or just three bet. Uh, I don't mind either way, to be honest. Because Ben's so short. Like, it doesn't matter whether you jam or three bet. Maybe by jam, mm -hmm. you just clear out the other guys and just force it heads up. Which is probably yeah, what but he's want never to folding. He's never folding anyway, so I don't think it matters too much. He's just going to jam. I do think Ben is just going to call. I mean, there's no point in folding pocket tens when you have 11 big blinds behind. Ben is not mm -hmm. a man that strikes us. I do think if Ben wants to win this one, he needs to draw a 10, Nanonoko. And he drills Bam. the 10 on the flop. That's pretty sick. And he's got him drawing that on the turn. He didn't actually have to drill 10. The Ace King did not pair at all. But what a flop for Ben CB. Top set. Clean as hell. <laughs> wow, he's yeah. back. Your pick. My pick is back. And did you see how, like, the river card just got dealt? No sweat or nothing. Like, you know how they peel the card when there's a chance, 0% chance of winning? Like, yeah. let's move on. I mean, drawing dead. It's very silly to peel a card when you're drawing dead. It's like, oh, no. I can't wait to figure out on what card I'm drawing dead. <laughs> You know, uh, now that you say that, it's like um, when you play at a, like a live stream table or something, like in live poker, and you know, you're drawing dead. The dealer's like waiting for the command. Now you can deal the river card. You're thinking like, just end it already, right? Like, I don't need to see. <laughs> we don't need a one minute pause for some dramatic whatever. <laughs> like, just brutal. But uh, wow. I told you, Ben's just chills, man. Gets it done. Mm -hmm. Speaking of brutal, Dario Sammartino opens up of a very short stack with Queen 10 suited from uh, under the gun plus one, hoping that it would look super strong and no one else would dare to fight back. But Ilis Borisinen is not impressed and he takes it down with his ace queen. Whenever you open off that stack, and you're, you know what you're doing? You're just praying so hard. You're like, please, just let me take this one pot down. You know, I don't ask for much. Yeah. Just some blinds and antis, you know? <laughs> it looks so strong. Okay. I'm opening up 10 big blinds. Yeah, brutal. A queen's plus here, guaranteed. Like, you guys would be silly to fight, and then you still see someone jam into you. You're like, how do they always have it? It's so sick. <laughs> Ben CB's this got more chips than Kale Burns. That's your pick. I know. Ooh, top two pair for Mr. Burns. 
See, Elon Sparsinen wins a pot. He gets up to 2.9 million. Next hand, he loses some chips again. He's back to 2.3 by the time this hand is done. Yeah, brutal. Um, He will lose some chips here. I don't think he'd lose stacks unless the three rolls off, but he definitely will be losing some chips. Kale probably will check call. Um, Felt the flush draw. Oh. <laughs> you did oh not my do God. that, dude. PLO master. Even the PLO master cannot figure this one out. He's out. He's I'm not out, but he's out. He's gonna lose a lot of chips. Yep. All the chips. We figured he was gonna lose some chips, but he's now in danger of losing all the chips. Goes for a bet of five big blinds, 350k. Only, it's only a couple cards I'll save him. Literally the five on the river. It's the only card I think will save Elis from losing more chips. Unless Kale just starts ripping it now. Oh, still think he loses chips, but it's. You know what? He loses less chips on this card, right? Like, yeah. No one wants to go all of it. Maybe someone goes 700K or 800K. Yeah. Not too bad of a river card for Elis. <laughs> Kale thinking about leading out because. He thinks ace queen, ace king and stuff would check. He does still check. Elis Parsinen with two pair. The two pair looks a little less pretty if there is a four straight on the board. Probably still value bets, right? I'm trying to get looked up by naked ace. There's still a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. I buy chips. Bets 800k gets called immediately. Kel Burns wins a big one, and he's back to the amount of chips he had when he started this final table. And Elas Parson and just kind of continues his up and down the roller coaster as he hits us with a ship it emoji. Uh, that's actually the worst, though, when you're value betting and you just get called immediately and you were wrong. You're like, damn it. Mm -hmm. Why yeah, didn't you're I thinking just like, check? okay. Is this thin? Like, should I value that here? I gotta value that this. It'll be too criminal to check. And you're like, I should have freaking checked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is the absolute worst. Old Fishing decides to open it up with Jack 10 suited. And he takes another one down. Old Fishing has been cruising, man. I actually believe that he may have been playing this final table while fishing. Because it doesn't seem like he's too involved. But every now and then he tosses a couple chips into the center. And he's just hovering around hovering around 1.5. Started the final table with 1.9. Don't even know how he lost chips, but he did. With jacks, I guess he opened jacks once. I don't know. Oh, all Dario right, Sabatino all in. Ben C B. Yeah. That has to be a call. Ben makes the call, and Dario Sabatino, the runner up of the WSOP main event 2019, is in trouble. We could chop it with a tree. We could chop it with a lot of cards. Yeah, those cards you see on out there, that's not one of them, though. Can't be, right? No. That is indeed not one of them. And that means that Ben wins another big one. Dario Sementino, unfortunately for him, is out in eighth place. Walks away with $66,000. And Ben is now up to $2.6 million, which means he's third in chips. I don't know how Ben does it, man. Like... Because he doesn't play every single time, but he always gets deep, man. I don't know, man. He's just so solid. He was always making a moves too, like here and there. Ah, he's got good timing. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Nice call there with King Jack, but I think it'd be criminal to fold small blind against big blind short a stack of the table. It was a little over seven big blinds, I guess. I mean, you're not always in love there, but you just hope you get it in good. Yeah, for sure. Um, but Dario, bad. Not a great performance. Can't blame him, though. No. Well, the Ace King. Can we blame him, though? <laughs> yeah, you know, let's forget about that hand. Let's forget about it. Nicely <laughs> done for Nicholas to set, too. Yeah. This is about, yeah, like, the I time as well where he just saw that, and he's like, damn you, Ben. Elis could be in a little bit of trouble here too. Shouldn't be in all the trouble. He still has 20 big blinds behind, but 
Opening things up here with King, Queen of Spades, but all the spades are out. Ben just... Go Whoa, what the hell? Just flops the nuts with King, Queen. Okay. It's not over, though. Maybe we hit a king, and then we stack... We send Elis back in. Check, check. What about we hit an eight, and Elis gets a double up? Yeah, I agree with that one, too. Oh, well, Elis should bet. Big bet. Just like, you're not getting off cheap here. Mm -hmm. Ben at least calls. Does he ever do yeah, anything else other than calling him? Raise me. Yeah, he's got to control the pot. Like, him raising me ridiculous. Like, just try to represent a five all of a sudden. I mean, Ben's no, creative, but that's too five. creative for me. <laughs> no. God, breaked it. Ben makes the call. Elis has the cleanest run out possible. Flop the nuts, had the nuts on the turn, still has the nuts on the river. Now he's just wondering, what are you playing, Benjamin Rolla? And how much will you pay me on the river? He won't pay that. <laughs> well, that's good news for Elis. He's back to 2 million. It's obviously not as many chips as he once upon a time had, but... Still in the mix. What are you chatting away about, Mr. Nenonoko? <laughs> oh! Huh. I don't know. I kind of like just re-raising smaller. Some people do that. Because you still can do like those Ace-5 offsuit solver bluffs with that, right? But when you mm -hmm. just jam there, you kind of... Because everyone does that play now, right? The Ace X offsuit three bet, and you know maybe they put you on. This... They make an Ace. I don't know. Seems weird. No, no. We'll save that mm -hmm. thought. This could be bad news for Elis Parsonen again, because that is only thirteen big blinds. He has Ace ten suited yep. in the small blind. I agree. Could be bad. Maybe he thinks Neil's a little salty because he's down to one million chips. Make sure your call mm -hmm. range expand a little bit. Um, it's also an okay hand to go with, you know, against the stack mm -hmm. size and everything. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fault him, man. But if he can get away from it, would be pretty nice too. You're not slam dunking. How's that? I agree with that. I, I honestly, I think he will go for it. No, he falls. Good fall by Elis. I think a lot of people would have just gone for it there, especially because Neil is the shorter stack by a little bit as well. It's not like there was someone else with a million or someone even shorter than him. Oh, good job there by Elis Parsinen. Yeah, if give Neil <laughs> like 1.5 big blinds less, I think uh, I think it's in. I agree. This could very well go fold until old fishing designs to just get it all in. And then we get another very quick hand. And we're getting closer and closer to Nenonoko's favorite blind level. <laughs> the 100k? I love that one. Seriously, it's way easier than the 200k. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not totally... Well, it is. it is easier, but I don't know if I would go with way easier. How's the little one doing, Nenonoko? Good. Uh, very good. Just, um, super happy, loves to play, like, can speak, you know, reason, not like good, obviously, but can say a lot of words. It's, it's very good. Yeah. Loving it. I'm happy to hear that you're loving it. I uh, probably actually, could well, say I was streaming your yesterday. name, probably be like Roddy. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas opens pocket trees. Elis just calls here with ace queen suited flop stop pair. Don't think we're gonna get a whole lot from Nicholas in this hand. Nicholas may even just give up on this, realizing that there is. Or okay, he's like gonna try. Done, he's going. Yeah. Yeah, he's trying to move people off of those pocket pairs that would flat that stack size. Makes sense, like eights and lower. No way they can call. Even tens would have trouble calling the slop. But Nicholas, he's a he's a this one is... and done kind of guy. He's not a multi barreler, you know. Does not suffer from the "I want to win this hand" syndrome, even though I have no business winning this hand. Exactly. 
And that, my friends, at home is how you get a trophy case over a GG with arrows, where you can scroll. And at this point, you can keep on scrolling. <laughs> Would you say Michael Adamo has the worst I want to win this pot syndrome or what? <laughs> yes, but he's, I mean, there's a few more though. But yeah, Michael Adamo does have it pretty bad. But hey, it's working <laughs> out. So, it, it, but it, it works really out for, for everyone else. Yeah. It never works out. They get destroyed. Now, he's definitely the first one that jumps to mind. But he's also incredibly fun to watch because of it. So, <laughs> yeah. What? This. What? Nicholas Ostet? That's just mean, man. Why do you have to do Neil like that? I feel like every single person is trying to pick on Neil for some reason. But he's not playing that tight. You know what I mean? Like, I've seen other players play very tight and that are satellite winners. You know, like, but everyone's mm -hmm. just trying to get a piece of them. I mean, I, I do like it in a way where you said it before, it's a one and done. This is also almost like a one and done where Nicholas just thinks there's never going to be any flops that will be really good for him. So you may as well just try to win it pre. And if you can do that, awesome. And if you can't, who cares? You're probably going to lose those chips anyway. He's the chip leader. He can afford to lose an extra big blind or two. Yeah, it works out like this. Jack Dan of Heart is one of my favorite hands. Let's get it all in, mate. You don't love it. Yeah. You got to do it. And he does. Just close out the plays of the other opponents by jamming yourself. Whenever Elis takes like an unnecessary second, I always feel like he's looking for an emote. And then suddenly he's like, ah, oh, there's no good emote right now. <laughs> he's let's go. What he should do instead of looking for emote is looking for an Ethernet cable. Yes, he absolutely should do that. You know, it's kind of funny, by the way. I didn't tell you this yet. As Nicholas is going to open this, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of action. When I was playing the day one of the PLO Osses and I got moved to Daniel's table, I was like, hey, guys, I'm, I was streaming as well. I was like, hey, I'm at Daniel's table. I'm going to record a snap cam video. So I recorded a snap cam and I'm like, hey, Daniel, what's up? Seems like you're doing great. Um, it was a lot of fun to have you join us yesterday for a bit of the High Roller Super Moons. Good luck. And literally while I'm recording it and I send it, he starts getting in his hand and it always is like a little 10, 15 second buffer between you recorded the video and send it and it plays. And while I send mm -hmm. that video, he's in a big pot and he goes all in with aces against kings in PLO, so some other cards too, and he loses it. So right when my video plays, I'm like, hey, Daniel, what's <laughs> up? He loses like 40 big blinds and I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and then he actually, yeah, he took it in very good spirit. He made a little video for me too. He's like, hi, Rotterdam. Well, did you see that hand just now? I was doing perfectly fine before you joined the table, but uh, it was fine. Like he didn't care too much. But I was like, man, this timing is is pretty unfortunate. I thought maybe like he interpreted it like wrong. He's like, man, this guy just needling the crap out of me, right? Like he's like, how are you doing, Daniel? He just saw me lose a pot. Um, but yeah, no, that sucks. <laughs> Nicholas opening up this one with Queen Jack offsuit on the, the gun. NCB has a pretty hand, but every big blind matters. We know that Ben is very uh, careful with his BBs. Doesn't throw them around. Yeah, I think you see him bluff it off, you know. Couple of decent hands here. Ace 10 offsuit, Queen Jack suited, pocket sixes, and King Queen for Nicholas in the big blind. I don't know how Nicholas has 5 million, but he does. This guy's just the ultimate grinder or what? Yes, he is. Right. That he sure two is. Sixes. Just do, do I get a point if two sixes make a set? No. Why would you? <laughs> I don't know. I just. I want more chances. I need to catch up. Oh my wow. God, Nicholas, you are maniac, maniac, kings and queens. Well, well done, Nicholas. Well done. We just play some power. <laughs> you wonder how he man. has 5 million yeah. chips, Nananoko. He's got 5.6 million chips now, and we didn't even get to see a flop. Sorry, go ahead. Look at the delay. I can't no, no, I'm just something. saying he just plays power poker. He got the ace 10 to fold. He got the two sixes to fold. Like, huh. Well done.
He plays a good chip leader. Like, it's solid. It's not, like, reckless, but it leans on you over and over again. You just slowly bleed away. Mm -hmm. If he was a MMA fighter, he'd be a wrestler, and he just leans on you with his entire body weight. He doesn't punch you. Mm -hmm. He just leans on you. He lets you carry his body weight for five minutes, ten minutes, and eventually you're all out of steam. Or in this case, all out of big blinds. <laughs> <laughs> The NCB solve a special, but Elis Parisin and has aces. You Don't can't solve a special to ace five, all right? Not, <laughs> not in the the middle position. It's not that special. Yeah, this is like, damn it. What do I do? Old Fishing actually has somewhat of a pretty hand. This is the kind of hand that you would like to AC a flop with. Or B is on the... Oh my oh. god, that's all in. That is all in, guaranteed. 100%. You know, right? Elis is like, you know what? Let me just get that blinds and antis. Like, how can you flop so strong in the big blind here? It's going to be an all in and a call. And Elis will hope that he's just going up against a queen or something. Or mm -hmm. maybe just a flush draw. But he's going up against a pair and a flush draw. And this is honestly quite close, percentage wise. I guess the aces are a tiny bit ahead, but not honestly not a whole lot. I think it's like 52 48 or something. Oh, they Jack 8 is actually high. ahead. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Elis Partisan and needs an ace, queen, or a three. Could be an ace or a three. It's a three <laughs> on the river. My goodness. Wow. Good game. Wow. You good game them too. All right. Well, that is the end of old fishing. He goes out in seventh place, walks away with $83,000. Don't think. Uh, he really did anything wrong then, and no, he saw a flop with a pretty hand, and he flopped the world, took the lead on the turn, just got rivet. Yeah, Elis almost out of the tournament if he had lost that pot. Whew, that was a big one. Well, he could not have played his aces any better. You know, it's kind of funny as well as there. At first, everyone folds to you. You've got aces. You're like, damn it. Am I really not going to get any action with my aces? Then at least you get called. You're like, oh, that's something. You put in some chips on the flop. You're like, oh, my God, all in call. And then you see what you're up against. You're like, oh, my God. <laughs> Did you that see he was behind, too? Emotions. Yeah, yeah. I thought he would be 1% or 2% ahead, but he was actually like 0.5% behind. Yeah, me too. I thought he'd be up like 1% or something or 2 I'm glad you agree with me, K was trying to see some flops here. Obviously, Queen Jack, not a great hand, but he's very confident in his post-flop play. Hey, do you remember the four players that we mentioned earlier? Ben CB, Kel Burns, Elis Parsin, and Nicholas Estet? It's very <laughs> possible. Yeah. Nice Who do you like that flop better for? For Mr. Burns? Oh, for sure. Um, but now sucks for both players. <laughs> They're both like, God damn, the ace. <laughs> Hard for Kale Burns. Elis has done a lot of, too. throughout the night, Elis has done a lot of check flop, see bad turn when he's the pre-flop raiser. Uh, mm. Does not do it this time. So he like, yeah, he, he likes to control it a bit and do delayed bets. That's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Wow. Cal Burns is like, all night long, you've either been C-betting or checking the flop and then betting the turn. Seems like you're not very fond of this board. Mr. Burns picks one up, and he's back to 4 million chips. He already was there once upon a time, but that's a long time ago. How did he lose all his chips again? Was it Queens against Ace-King, right, of uh, Rodrigo? He also lost... Um... Elis Parson in some chips with two tens against Ace King. That was a post flop spot. It just, but he he yeah. fights, he plays pots. You know, Kale Burns like he's back to four million deserved in my opinion. Like you know, he's like flat calling people, just stealing pots. Mm -hmm. it's really fun to watch. He's playing really well. Do you think Elis Parson is playing this tournament from his sauna? I'm sure that he's got a sauna in his house, playing high <laughs> roller tournaments from Finland. 
The Finnish people love saunas, don't they? Yep. I absolutely in love with them. Um, there you go, Nenonoko. Your favorite blind level of the night. This is all you, mate. <laughs> well, I mean, I was going to say, Elis, that's probably why he's playing on Wi Fi, right? But I'm just surprised his laptop hasn't melted in that sauna yet. Probably has a waterproof laptop. I'm sure they exist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Rodrigo. The size of this gem pocket trees and Elis Potterson and actually has a reasonable hand here. It's for half of his stack and obviously he has Nicholas to somewhat worry about, but Nicholas opens everything from the button, so he's not super worried about it. Let's go with the ace then. Wow. Yeah, no. Rodrigo, like you can tell he's he's here to play. He's like was here to play at the very beginning of the tournament, uh -huh. right? He four bet the King Queen offsuit. Pocket fours. <laughs> We'll not make a set here. Team. Last time, I just want to say on the record, the last time that Ben CB folded pocket fours at the final table behind Roller Super Millions, he would have he flopped quads. Okay, I just want to get that out you there. You remember that? Oh, of course I remember that. I'll never forget it. I'm sure that Ben is thinking about it too. He doesn't want to see this flop. Ben really doesn't want to see this flop. He's like, these stupid commentators are going to talk about it forever again. I should have played pocket fours because they always make a sad man see me. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <sighs> Brutal, Roddy. You would have hit another pointer. The thing is, at this point, Ben is smiling because I think he's thinking of it too. He's like, yeah, oh, he knows you like pocket, pocket fours, four. right? Like, he must know. Mm hmm. Yeah, like I tried to tease Ben about uh, how he should have played his pocket fours when he would have flopped quads. And that's because pocket fours always make a set, and he was aware of this. And then he's like, no, nah, it's actually a fault I see him for. I'm like, I know. <laughs> this was not the joke, Ben. <laughs> he's like, no, nah, on my stack, it's a fault. I'm like, I know, stop. <laughs> Oh, Ben. I mean, he wouldn't have been called anyway. Nobody really had a calling hand there. Yeah, but he Unless would he would have just chips. raised and maybe the big blind. Wow. Life is unfair. Nicholas Ostet, already the chip leader of this final table, wakes up with aces under the gun. Neil. <laughs> Neil is down to eight big blinds. 10 8 is a hand that, like, sometimes you want to toss in that extra big blind and just go yeah. with it, right? You flop top pair, you yeah, flop an sure. open ender. I agree. I don't so hate one call here because you pay a hundred. Yeah. A hundred K chips for a pot of 525 K, but he lets it go. So he will not Thank have God. to battle yeah, I mean, the aces. Had of... aces. Mm hmm. Oh, hey, we're going to see a flop. Pocket fours, ace 10. Yeah. We're going to see a flop. Oh, this is worse because you actually get five cards on the spot. <laughs> you <I know>. got... <laughs> but I don't need five cards. I only need three. Pocket four is always <laughs> flop a set, Nanonoka. <laughs> well, here we go. Kale's, of course, going to call. Let's see. Neil. Neil's going to need a straight. Ooh, Ooh. It's very close. Picks what up a else? lot of outs. Memes aside, guys. Any ace, any jack, any 10, any heart. Gets the heart on the river. Wow, and Cal Burns even had the four of hearts too. Neil staying alive. Congratulations, mate. Back to 1.5 million. Cal Burns is like, these dumbass commentators. Pocket fours never make a set. I'm like, well, when you watch the VOD, you'll see that man would have made a set, okay? <laughs> hey, you can jam again. Ace 10, back to back. Yeah, he could for sure. But uh, brutal for Kale. He's lost two all ins pre flop now, right? Like, I feel like mm -hmm. he's playing great, just not getting, you know, he's getting unlucky, actually. Yeah. That's a, and twice on the river, by the way. I mean, this one was maybe not as brutal as the other one. Uh oh. Nicholas Asset has pocket fives, but Elis Partisanen has a five, too. This could actually be call, and then a call from Elis Partisanen, too. 
we could have a three-way pot. Yeah, I agree here. For sure. Seems reasonable. Be criminal to fold 5-6 for one big blind. Playing for 725k yeah. chips. And you got good stack. And so you know what? This seems like a board that would just check around. You get one more shot at that five. You've got one out, mate. I'll take it. You give me all. The... Give me one out fifty-two times. I'm gonna hit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't Dang. know if that's necessarily true, but. I think this is going to check around again. There we go. One out of pocket fives. Always. Say it, Roddy. No. Does it? No. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> pocket fives uh, only makes one set. So Cal Burns still has the best hand here. I'm pretty sure that he feels like he's got the best hand. It's very unlikely anyone kicker. has a king here. Yeah, yeah, he should be value betting this with this kicker. Too good. Jack ten, he probably checks, mm -hmm. but ace jack, it's good enough. Good, good sizing too. Yep, I like it. He will probably not get called by anyone, of course, but still a, a nice move there. Yeah, gotta try. Mm -hmm. Maybe well, but someone has pocket tens, and they call you. The faults. Will Rodrigo get feisty with King Nine offsuit? No, he will not. Ben is now the shortest stack again, by the way. A little while ago he was uh, third in chips, but he is now our shortest stack. Yeah, he does his best game when he's you know the, the fifteen to twenty big blind. You know that's that's his comfort zone. But obviously he can play big stack, but today that's his stack. The Sparsinen goes for a little bet here. Both players have nothing, but Kilburn does have a gut shot and some back doors. Wow. Once you see the back doors, you can't unsee them. Drills the jack on the turn. It's still not a card that makes you go woohoo, but it's obviously better than having jack high. Gives you the showdown value, you know, try to beat like uh, some random nines, stuff like that. It's, it's enough. It's not great. I'll take it. You know, looking at the amount of money that was placed at final table betting, I'm actually kind of surprised mm -hmm. that over 5k was put on Neil. You don't see that super often on a satellite winner. Neil coming in over $525 satellite, $5,000 yeah. were placed on him, while only 8000 was bet on Ben. What about on old fish, old fishing? Just $229, 12 people. But <laughs> no, um, you know, the Indian players, right? Like people just really... They love their community. Maybe it's just like, like, hey, I made the final table. All the Indians just came in, just start putting money down. Wow. Did he just bluff raise that jack five offsuit there against a the little bet? That's, yeah. I mean, he had the best hand, but it's, it's, a, it's a bold play on that board. Oh, no. No, you won't see anything. I thought we got rid of this meme. Which meme? Pocket fours always makes a set. We've talked about it way too many times in the past, like, 15 minutes. Why? Can we rabbit hunt? We won't see it. See. <laughs> I love Elis shows the most irrelevant cards at the most random moments. Is... Yeah. He's the <laughs> guy where you just look at him and go, you just don't say anything, but you just glare at him. Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> Go for the How I Met Your Mother meme. Cool story, bro. Like seven of hearts, <laughs> randomly. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like Elis is so irrelevant. Gets... <laughs> yeah, he just gets bored and he's like, hey guys, I had the seven of hearts. Like so. Let's see what he does with Queen Jack of Diamonds. Nicholas Estet is the big blind. King seven of clubs, I'm gonna call. Ooh, Yo, 
a flop. Not bad, Nicholas Estet. Still need to improve, though. Let's see what Elis does here. We've seen a lot of check, flop, bet, turn. Yeah, if that's the case, he's definitely not betting mid pair. I'd be quite shocked, to be honest. Well, never mind. Throw that out the window. Just wants to keep control, I suppose. It's still it's tricky whether you check it or bet it and get get some action. I'll tell you that. Definitely does not want to see a club on the turn. He does not. That's actually kind of a funny card as well. Now makes an open ender, right? To some degree. <laughs> it's a weird open ender, but yeah. Double it's belly like bust is straight draw. Yeah. He thinks he could be behind for oh. sure. Wow. Oh no. <laughs> That yeah, is a really it's hard to lose chips, Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. What a dumb river card for Elis. Wow, Nicholas checks. Oh my god, what do you make of that? I think he thinks there's more value in getting his opponent to try to represent the king rather than getting paid off by worse. Um, I think betting is still a good option just because the nine would make a straight. Um, mm. But if the nine didn't make a straight, I do like his check because it is hard. These guys are solid. They don't really pay off with even two pair on these board textures. So you get you're just way more likely to get up and do uh -oh. some bluff. Uh-oh. Yeah. Sorry, mate. No, it's okay. Well, ben could still fold, I guess. Could he still fold ever? Oh, he's going to fold. I can tell you that. Yeah? Okay. Mm-hmm. He's Ben CV. Oh, then I'm not worried anymore. <laughs> Rodrigo was thinking, I'm going to reach out this hand or something. And he's going to see the heavy action. Like, okay, muck. Ben does fold very quickly, but it does mean that he's down to 10 big blinds. And in six hands, the blinds will go up. So, And let's not forget the next hand, or Ben also has the big blind. It's going to get very difficult for your pick of the week, Nanonoko. Hey, he was like 12 to 1, okay? So, like, I, you know, I'm so far up ahead in our little side bet game. I'm like, Let me, I can spew some choices here and there, right? You're actually not, because the two guys that you picked, they both had, like, super low odds, like below 4. So. <laughs> you had Michael Adamo with 2.2 to 1. It's like, wow, congratulations, Nanonoko. That's really going to make the difference after one year. <laughs> um, well, Kale Burns is in good contention for this one, I'll admit. I like, I'm like. i actually like, loving the way he's playing. I think he's quite oh. unlucky. I think if he had won one of those hands, he'd be great. Ace-Jack, yes. Yeah. Rip it. Ace-Jack will get it all in. Ace-Deuce will fold. I don't think they go left plenty behind. I mean, it's kind of annoying because it's 800k, but that's still half of his stack, eight big blinds, so he has to let it go. I'm with you. If Cal Burns wins tonight, this is definitely not one of these, like, okay, the chip. Oh, my God. Ben might get a double. Yeah. I think Kale could pay this off, too. Yeah. Yeah. He... Well, oh, obviously, even more likely to pay it off. Here we go. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest call of Ben's life with 12 big lines. King, queen versus ace, queen, and one of the other kings got folded, and there's an ace on the flop. Run run a heart. Put a sweat. Nope. Man, Cal Burns did such a good job getting black to 4.6 million. And now he loses 1.4 immediately again. It's time to ban. And ban is suddenly back to 28 big blinds. And we are on a break. I didn't even keep track of the clock at all. Because I guess it is true what they say. Time flies when you're having fun. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the show so far. If you are, make sure to go ahead and subscribe or follow the channel over at YouTube. If you haven't done that yet, there are a lot of cool poker shows happening on this channel. And it also shows us that you guys are enjoying the coverage of the High Roller Super Million. Nano and I will be back in 4 minutes and 20 seconds. And we'll see you then. Bye. Brent, we are running it back this year. The Colossus, the $400 buy-in, the $3 million guarantee, all the day one flights in the lobby and day two coming up on Sunday. You fired up for this one? Of course I am, Jeff. The Colossus, baby. Mm. Hi, I'm the new Daniel Negreanu, and I'm the old Daniel Negreanu. 
We both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I gotta ask, man, what, uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You, you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this motherfucking hand. This motherfucker is calling the fucking turn with this piece of fucking hand. Fucking absurd. Whatever. I, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG, poker star. Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my. Michael Otamo is the best. Welcome back to week nine, season two, hour three of this final table, as we are still down to six. Could get some fireworks here, though, with Ace-10 suited and Ace-Jack offsuit. Nananoko still putting on his headset. All right. Nothing crazy. Just casually eating a banana on stream. What is this? I can't believe it. <laughs> I'll let you eat your banana. Ace-10 doesn't flop a whole lot, but... Does see one diamond on the board. Once you see the back doors, you can't unsee them. Only has 14 big blinds. This is obviously a flop that doesn't connect super well with Ben's calling range. But if Ben does have a pocket pair, he might just go for it. Funny hand, as it's a very important one, of course, for Rodrigo. Goes check, check. The ace jack of Ben is still in the lead. Ben would obviously love to win this one too. 
Still playing 26 back, 26 big blinds behind, but if he takes up this one, then he's up to 32. Quick math. Check, check, check. We're going to check it all the way. Ace Jack is still good. I guess both players will be somewhat happy to just check this one down. Rodrigo hoping to go up against the King Queen suited, King Jack. All that jazz. He's going to receive the bad news. Ben has outpipped him by one. I'm surprised uh, Rodrigo didn't reshove the ace 10 suited. It seemed like a decent spot, especially against the stack sizes of both players. Yeah. Saved. Well, he couldn't. Re he couldn't reshuffle. You mean either shove oh, immediately he... or he raised under a gun. He was a razor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Never mind. It's okay, Nano. That's why I'm here <laughs> to to correct all the silly things you say. <laughs> yes, correct though. Kidding, Damn. mate. Kidding. Don't be offended now. <laughs> nah, I'm not offended. You know what I like Nicholas Estet does? He keeps things simple. You know, like he doesn't do like things that make it tricky. So he just jammed like the ace. Oh, pocket fives. Who cares? Okay, can we? Can we get it? Can we? We could. If King Queen wants to, you know, people want to be a little adventurous here. But I feel Possible. like if Neil wants to play, he might just jam. Okay, Neil folds under the gun. Yeah, King yeah, Queen will jam right, here. Though. Sort of, but sort of a jam. Still with six. I feel like it's going to go real quick soon. If one falls, then I feel like we're going to blink twice and then suddenly we're down to three. Uh, yeah, the splines are going up, aren't they? I think. Okay, man. Gosh, I mean, no. I did. How, it's a little greedy, right, for me to have, want to hit two sets in one day. But the thing is, you hit two sets back to back. Remember that? Yeah. Well, yeah, there were like two or three hands apart. But I mean, to be fair, I should have hit a set as well today. If Ben yeah. would have just believed oh. that pocket fours always make a set. <laughs> what is Neil going to do here with King Queen? Cal Burns has been opening quite a bit throughout the entire night. Whether he's at 4.5 million or 2.2 or 2.5. I think he'll reshove. Ah, oh, never mind. But I think he should. Because Kale opens wider than everyone. Mm -hmm. So. Yep, he's been King opening Queen's a lot of Jack 9, good. Jack 10, Queen 10, that kind of stuff. And then King Queen doesn't do that bad. Yeah, and you flop. You would have flop King Queen. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Can't it's actually him. kind of annoying because if you don't see this flop, you're not bothered by it. But now you do see it and you're like, man, that's such a good flop for me. And this is where it's you have triggered. that tiny voice in the back of your head. Maybe he's got aces, but you know he doesn't have aces, so you're still pissed. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> not sure what Rodrigo is planning here. <laughs> See some back doors or something. Wow. Okay. It's going to work. It's so funny. He's got such a tiny stack, too. I know. Kale is like kind of suspicious, but he's like, what the hell can he do? <laughs> what? Wow. And he, he calls just with ace, ace 10? 10 high. That's sick, right? Like, just pure sickness there. And I got to say, Elis' emoji game is really on point, even though he doesn't see what we see. But these emotes perfectly describe everything that's happening in this hand. <laughs> the WTF yeah. race there. And then the so confusing call with Ace-10. I couldn't have said it any better myself, Elis Partisan. <laughs> I think Kale thinks... He doesn't think his opponent has a queen here ever, right? Because if you check raise the queen, you would never check this turn. That is a scary turn card. I think he thinks Rodrigo has a bluff or he randomly hit a pair somewhere. Like a nine. 
Well, oh no, that's that, it. GG. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that that is GG. Rodrigo makes the bottom end of the straight. Cal Burns has the top end of the straight. 1.5 million chips in the middle. I think this is all in an 0.1 second snap call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is painful. And then yeah, Edith Parson like... will hit us. Whoa, chips. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think he still loses his chips, right? Because KO could have some hand turned into a bluff. Say like an A7. I don't, I don't think the ace five will fold. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. This is a weird hand. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 really fun to watch. Like deck flop action was crazy given the stack sizes. Both players. Mm -hmm. it, that like this is some real poker here, street poker. <laughs> Elis is just <laughs> tilting people while he's not in the hand. <laughs> Hoping for bust outs. I mean, Rodrigo obviously knows that he's dead against every 10. Could be slightly worried about runner runner spade, but. Yeah. Less yeah, than 10 big blinds. Be. You have less than 9 big blinds. Less than 8 big blinds. <laughs> it's hard to fold this to Kale Burns, who's very good at in reading situations and maybe turning his hand to bluffs and stuff like that. Um, this is proper confusing. It's confusing for Rodrigo as well. <sighs> it's I'm trying to, okay. So what tens is he up again? That's what he's trying to figure out. What tens is he up against? Queen ten? But wouldn't yeah. Queen Ten just bet the turn or jam the flop? Pocket tens? I guess it's it's possible. I'd say tens is possible. Mm-hmm. I guess he also has to be worried about the spades. A seven mm -hmm. spades, a six of spades. Might play this way. Yeah. He does lose the hands. I guess he's probably more likely to lose the hands than beat hands. That's, I guess, mm -hmm. is the best way to say it. But the pot odds. Two thirds pot. He might talk That's himself right. into. Yeah. What do you? What if you have the same hand as me? <laughs> Ace five. Yeah. No, I don't think it's. I don't think he thinks Ace five bet call it the flop. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. You're right. I think A7 of spades, A6 of spades, or pocket tens are indeed the most likely candidates here. Yeah. He still has four minutes and 30 seconds left in his time bank. This is obviously for his tournament life, so there is no pressure, no, way to, uh, no reason to rush it. If he falls, he is down to less than eight big blinds. <laughs> the action is quite weird too right because turn checking is very weird if for a real hand on the flop because the nine of spades you know like seven eight eight nine like these queen tens and king queens these hands would would bet turn for sure mm -hmm. and like what kind of two pairs could cal burn ever have not many, right? Like, what is he opening <laughs> there? He's not opening queen seven. He's not opening queen six. Queen nine yeah. suited like once in a super blue moon, but why wouldn't queen nine suited bet the turn? Exactly. And even what would what two pair do on this river? They probably would check. Like, this is, this is tough. I think he's going to use all the time bank. I and mean, I think he should. It's a tough spot. Mm -hmm. Um, it's against a tough opponent. That doesn't help. Yeah, she'll be. It's a really fun hand. I'll tell you that. Somehow, a hand that doesn't look like it will be much fun turned out to be some very interesting fireworks.
Rodrigo deep in the tank does fold nice. and he folds correctly. Well done. Even though he's left with less than eight big blinds, he is still alive. Now Nicholas instead has aces. Elis wow. Parson has nines. And New has King Jack. Like New could normally wow. jam here. And could New save Elis Parson? And if he folds, Elis is all in. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But can Neil fold? Or just min race. But Neil has been jamming these spots before with this deck size. I'm a little worried. Yeah. Oh no, Neil. Oh. Nah, can't really blame him. Even though Rodrigo is very short, there is a big pay jump on the left. But I don't hate it. King Jack at this point, it still matters. Now, can Elis get away from his nines? Yeah, I kind of think he can. I think he, he should even. Yeah, I think so, because um, Rodrigo is also short. So Yeah. I yeah, want I to call, but I think he emojis. will fold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 so he, he just clicks emojis while he thinks. It's interesting. Yeah. I think he will fold this. Yep. He has folded. And Neil obviously knows that this is probably going to be bad. And now he just hopes it's not too bad. He's like, ace queen one time. It's not ace queen. Okay, we do have outs. No, we no. have a 10. Nine's, nine's hit a set, just saying. Oh my god, yeah, I just saw that. Well, wow. <laughs> Shows one nine. Show the other one. <laughs> Show the other one. <laughs> Unfortunately for Neil, his journey at the final table ends here. He goes out in a sixth place. Honestly, played well. We definitely love that ace eight of clubs regem on Elis. That was really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I'll give him that for sure. But you know what, Roddy? Well, he did get a 100k score. We'll give him that. I think he played $500 satellite too, which is pretty cool. But we're mm -hmm. on pace for the corners, the four corners, the square. Yeah. Absolutely. Even though it's a little bit imbalanced towards the top right, but we are on pace. <laughs> ah, and Elis as well. I didn't even pay attention to it that he flopped the set. I just felt like yeah, he can never play the nine set. That'd just be insane with Rodrigo being that short and Neil basically being all in. Yeah, yeah. it's brutal. It was an interesting spot, though. Like, I bet you some people might even call there, but I can... Characteristic-wise, it definitely seemed like he would fold. Ben wins this one, even though he didn't flop anything. But Ace-King is good in the end. Kings versus A6, small blind and big blind. But we're obviously deep enough for this not to be an all-in scenario by any means. And especially with Rodrigo nah. being as short as he is. But maybe sometimes Ben CB does something silly and three bets to A6, you know? I could see that happening. It's unlikely, I think. I don't know. Unlikely to work, but yeah. flop. The six of yeah. spade. That's he nothing. does call quickly because Ben probably knows that Cal is going to be aggressive as well because Rodrigo is so short, right? So he's obviously going to raise a bit more because you're supposed to fold from an ICM point of view. Oh, hey, the mm -hmm. six. <laughs> the six makes yeah. an open ender, even though the 10 is no good. Six is. Uh... <laughs> you probably will bet. I think he get he's got a lot of equity, get a lot of hands to fold, and he's not getting two kings to fold. Wow. Yeah, I don't fault him for betting this. Try to rep it, but but I feel like Cal Burns could just call here, even though a raise would obviously be maybe the better play. He makes the call. Oh my god! <laughs> I wanted to say Ben is the kind of guy to drill the five of hearts on the river, but who needs the five of hearts if you can drill the ace of diamonds on the river? Check check yeah. right, like you'll just gladly check this down. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Ben C B wins 1.8 million chips with the ace of diamonds on the river. And yeah, it has to be said, Cal Burns runs like absolute crap tonight. That guy should have had 14 million chips by now <laughs> if it wasn't for river cards going against him. Yeah, and he he played the hand good too. That was not an easy call to make on turn. Yes, he had the king of spades, but there's a four straight out there, you know? Like it's yeah. it's not like woohoo. Well done. But uh, Ben C B just that's hard to win. Really hard to win. Yeah. Wasn't Ben C B down to ten big blinds a while ago? He's got mm -hmm. <laughs> he's second in chips now. It's ridiculous. I just 
I believe in his play, but I also believe that this guy's like impossible to eliminate. You know, like uh, look at this. He's gonna get the it. perfect it's perfect. Yeah. Yep. Jesus. That is going to be for all the chips. I mean Rodrigo can never really fault here once you make a pair. That's just it. You gotta go with it. It's gonna be an all in and a call. Ben also has the ace of uh, hearts. Just needs to avoid queens and fours. No queen or four on the river, and Ben wins 1.7 million chips. Could be a queen. Could be a that? queen, but it's a jack. So, Ben. <laughs> we do get our four square beautiful setup. <laughs> the four plays we predicted a long time ago. Rodrigo goes out in fifth place, but he really showed us a lot of heart tonight. Very fun player. I think definitely one that we'll remember for quite some time. But it's down to these four. We mentioned it an hour and a half ago. We are here. Not the way that I expected to get here, though. No, no. Yeah, you expected those are the number one and number two in chips start of day, right? K.O. Burns and Elis. And no, it's the other guys who start in the middle and the bottom. They're the ones with all the chips. How does Ben do it? I really wanted to say while you were speaking, I was like, Ben is the kind of guy to drill uh, a five on the river, but. Yeah, no. Who needs a five if you can find an ace? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he does it too, because you got to remember he doesn't play every single Super Millions in every session. And for some reason, he's deep in every single tournament. Like, not even that many bullets. I don't know, man. Like some guys, they just they just always win the last all in, so they never eliminated him and Nicholas Estet. What man, is they got that talent? What is nice for me is that no matter what happens with these four is that I win something. I will win in either final table betting or I will win my pick versus you. So mm -hmm. it's a good whatever thing. it is. It's been, it's been some good poker. It's a real bit grindy, but I like it. Um, you know, it's like a really it's like a good lesson, like how to play some small ball poker here and there. This is also a nice Who's flop it? for Ben, by the way. Yeah, and no, like it's telling you, he just gets the timing is perfect for this guy. And then when he he then he makes this courageous bluff like at least once per session or final table, and then it always works. Big bet here. Uh, is Kale gonna peel? I wonder. Like, uh, he's he's like, I'm done. I'm done fishing. He's nine, sixes. pocket sixes. I think these two guys will be a little calm. Okay. Flops. Is that considered flop it? Because it's an over pair. It's hard to get an over yeah. pair of two sixes. It sure is, but he managed to do it. There's no way that Ben falls here. Might even race. That is not a card he loves to see. Nah. But Nicholas might be okay with ace nine showdown value wise. He must he does know he'll get check called by King X's. So uh, yeah, this seems okay. That was a great run out for Ben. Well yeah, Nicholas should be checking this. Uh be shocked mm -hmm. if he does anything else. <laughs> ben C B is up to six million chips, guys. Feel like you it thought was Nicholas just yesterday. Set grinds really well, but like this guy is on fire. Queens next hand. I know he's not going to get action, but my god, I can't even. I can't believe it. I don't think anyone can believe it. Benjamin Rolla is unstoppable. Nicholas may lose some chips here. Elis is obviously going to jam Ace King. Mm. I guess we just fold, right? One million chips is too many to lose. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh, Solver. Solver special. This is a reshuffing hand, I think. He's going to look around, see he's the shortest, see the chip leader's mm -hmm. opening. I think he's going to go if this ace five suited. I wonder yep. if, if he gets called. Fall. If he gets called, he's in really bad shape. And he does get called. An ace got folded. A five got folded. Elis Parson and his... Oh, my God. He does find it. But sixes make a flush draw. 
We need oh, a 10-5 or a spade. That's a lot of outs for Nicholas. 10-5 spade. It's a spade on the river. Spade. And that is good enough for Emoji. Mr. Nicholas Ostet. Yep. Ilas Parsin and eliminated in fourth place. Another solid performance by him, but he could not go all the way. Nicholas extends his chip lead over the rest of the table. Yeah, really well done. Uh, one corner is out. Bottom left corner is on pace to be out next, but can Kale Burns turn around and just get lucky somewhere? Because he has lost every all-in so far. Oh, and he well, gets there you have it. some action. Nice. Now Ben is pot committed too. He has to call. He is. He's pot committed for sure, right? Because half the stack is in. I don't know why he three bet so big. It seems because I saved my run, run good, good for, for now. now. <laughs> ace king versus ace four. That's a very scary thing to say, by the way. Oh my oh, god, he needs oh, to avoid a four or a diamond. Poker gods, come on, show some mercy, please, one time. Okay, that mercy. is mercy. Yep, finally. A little bit of justice for Mr. Burns. Uh, that would have been really too brutal. No, no, I would have rated this stream PG-18. Like, like, there's no way. That, that would have been too much. He deserved that. I actually, I actually really thought that was going to get there for some reason. Just like the way things has been going for Ben CV, but like, ooh. Back to the bottom. Ben casually, ben casually flopping a ten high flush and an open-ended straight flush draw. Well, actually, no, a gut shot straight flush draw. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. No, wow, <laughs> gets action though. Let's just give those chips. Back. Like he's like, you know, in the all-in, you kind of gave me a little bit too many chips here, so I'm gonna give you some chips back, and that's a bad card for Kale in the sense that he might still fire. Just thinking, look. I know I can't win with the pair of sixes. It's a four flush. Maybe I can make some king ten to fold. He's going to give a check. I think Ben will probably check too. Yeah. That's. I mean, Ben is probably a little worried now too, right? Like, it's like, what if he does have a jack of clubs or the ace of clubs? Ben's definitely worried, but he probably will call any reasonable bet size just because of the hand Ooh. he's got. Yeah, it's. Ah, it's not an easy call. Uh, it's tough. You know, not easy. But how? Oh, ben CB is smart, but dude, we did we did see him make some misstep in his previous and one he got second in, right? He folded aces, remember against that oh. guy? But there we go. Nice call. This time Ben does make the call and he gets a lot of chips back immediately, so he's back to five point three million. <laughs> These guys can't hold on to their chips, man. Nicholas yeah. Estet can. He's just chilling. I was very worried for Kale Burns when he said, I saved my run good for now. That's such a scary thing to say right before you're all in. <laughs> and you're dominating your opponent as well. I'm like, no, you're kind of taunting the poker gods almost. But I'm glad. It's actually insane that he even had such a sweat, right? It's like ace-king against ace-four. It's like that's not supposed mm -hmm. to be off-suit, right? It wasn't even ace-four suited. That's not supposed mm -hmm. to be that much of a sweat. Ben had like a million outs on the on the river. It's brutal. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Ben just gives up. Kale wins a very tiny one. Wow. I was about to say, Nicholas Estet must be sitting here tonight wondering, how did I not make any final tables in the previous eight weeks? This game really isn't that hard. And right when I was thinking that, he flops two pair. <laughs> now he checks checks. His opponent actually makes top pair with a queen kicker. Life is really good being Nicholas Estet, guys. <laughs> he's, he's too solid, man. Like, I don't know how he does it every single time. Ah, oh, it's a pot size bet. Kale's not going to fold mm -hmm. this. There are a lot of river cards, though, whether he improves or maybe it gets dangerous. Like that. That's a danger card, obviously. Should go check, check. But still lost a lot of chips yep. in this pot. Yeah, it's 1.8 million chips. Nicholas trying to figure out what his opponent has. It's obviously a very... Wow, okay. That's for a tiny oh, block that's bet. Annoying. That <laughs> is annoying. I think Nicholas also thinks his opponent is less likely to have a flush in an 8 because he didn't bet the flop. 
which is probably true. And wow, this guy, man, he just gets so sick value there. Nice. How do you get how do you get value on that river as well? Like that's supposed to be a scary card. <laughs> Flushes get there and eight makes a straight. And Nicholas still finds a way to squeeze out three additional big blinds of his opponent. As Ben is gonna make not a set yet, but he still has the best hand. You know what the saying is pocket fours always make a set, unless they don't need to make a set. Yep, that's right. Let's leave it at that. I can't believe that Nicholas just got paid off extra on that river. That's he mind got a blowing. lot of chips for that hand. Okay, I was like, all right, if I do it this way, they can't get me. Oh, they can. <laughs> They're going to call him <laughs> with King Jack and flop the world like an open ender and a flush draw somehow. And like... It's like these two have had polar opposite nights. For Cal Burns, this like, Cal Burns like represents everyone that like I hate poker, but I still love it. But I absolutely hate it. This game is so brutal and disgusting. And Nicholas instead represents everyone that's leaning back on his chair, feet on the desk. It's like poker is pretty fun, man. You click some buttons, you run good. I don't really see what the big fuss is. Pretty easy money. <laughs> yeah, um, and he started the final table like probably like in sixth place or something like that and just been cruising since the beginning because yep. in the very first hand he, he knocked out mike watson with kings against ace queen wow yeah pale burns at the trap doesn't work it's a pretty decent flop for ben all the back doors and a gut shot wow checking in oh, oh bad 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 It's a weird way to play aces so far. <laughs> I think he's going to start firing out that there's a little straight draw out there rather than hope mm -hmm. his opponent has a piece. Obviously, there's a call. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, Gale Burns this... is so unlucky, Roddy. He's so yeah. unlucky. This is undeserved. No, this is actually disgusting. Like, I love Ben, so it's always nice to see Ben do well, but Cal Burns runs like absolute dog shit. There's just no other way to put it. So it's, uh, it's actually brutal. It's amazing that he even made top three tonight. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> He's had the hardest final table so far. Poor guy. Question is, how much does he lose in this hand? Does he lose he it all, everything. or does he just lose some? I'm not sure. But he's definitely losing at least six, seven hundred K, I'll tell you that. Yeah. At least. Yeah, but like the big blind is 140k. So even if you're left with like six hundred K, what does that do for you? You look at it. You know? It's a novelty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Cal um, Burns. I feel like he feels it. I think he knows. He's like, that was a bad river, wasn't it? That was a really bad he's river. He's wondering what's he's wondering what size to use, like because obviously he would, if he bets, he's trying to get called by a jack or eight. Probably doesn't think his opponent has a draw, so it's actually better for him to bet. And I, I agree with that. Oh, he's going to check. Wow. Okay. Now he lets his opponent set the price. The long, what does the long tank check mean on this river? That's what Ben CV is wondering. And what to bet? Does he go small? He goes sizable. Mm -hmm. Never see Kale folding this. Just in case. Don't know, man. Well, I mean, like, look, you, you watch the delay. You see me and CB make some bl a bluff with the King Queen earlier. Like, I know it's not the same hand, but he's capable. And you see the bad news. Emoji. That's what Kale No, means. he's not an emoji guy. He's a chatty guy. <laughs> Type. He's a manual typer. Yeah, yeah. I think he's typing something now because he's waiting with 7-4. <laughs> Or he just smashed his desk, I don't know, but I actually feel a bit bad for Calburns. Now, of course, he could have played the aces different, but yeah, it's whatever. I honestly feel that he's been very, very, very unlucky tonight. And this is going to be an all-in and a call. <laughs> yeah, Ben might open, though, still, I think. Yeah, but I mean, with this, 
615 K. Now there's this extra money in the pot. Like I don't see how you fold queen nine here. Yep. So yeah, and in typical Calburns fashion. Yeah. And in typical Calburns fashion, one of them has a queen and the other one has a nine. Wow. He folds queen nine suited. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the right play is there, but um, it's interesting. I guess you also got to add in. I think he's that <laughs> Bennett. No, Maybe he's spraying that Bennett kings and, and yeah. then Nicholas had aces. He's like one time. <laughs> they jump. It happens. All right. How many clubs are we going to see on the flop? That's my question. Oh, it's a nine. Sure. <laughs> Man, it's disgusting. Actually, my heart goes out to Cal Burns today. I think every poker player that's ever had a... Oh, that's a 10. He's back. It's a 10 it's on a the ten. river. He's so louder. lucky. He's so lucky. <laughs> No, he's not. <laughs> that man just had to drill a river to win ace ten against ace nine. <laughs> he's not lucky, America. I do like this stuff by Ben, by the way. Like even though Cal Burns is super short, there's a lot of players who will just be like, uh, I don't want to battle with Nicholas. Now obviously he had ace queen, but Ben is not someone who's now not gonna play a hand just to make that pay jump. Like, all right, let's see if Nicholas can knock him out. This is a good move by Nicholas Estet too. Mm -hmm. No Ben CB powerhouse, but a Nicholas Estet powerhouse. Well done. Especially with the suited uh, king, good hand, good hand selection on that play. Are you forced to call here? No, right? Nope. No. Not enough. Uh, nice show. <laughs> Show them you've got it, Gale. Throw them off their game. Wow. Nicholas just calls real quick and actually flops the bottom pair here. Ben will bet. I mean, there's no way Nicholas falls, right? If you call and you flop a pair, he will continue. This pot is getting big, man. 1.7 million chips. And I think Ben is like, all right, let's step on the brakes for a split second. Let's not run into some really sick scenario here. Well, I guess he value bets now, given how fast that uh, card was went. Check, check. Mm -hmm. How sick is Nicholas? <laughs> Imagine if he all ins here. <laughs> uh, to represent the six eight, possible. Yeah. But six eight, three four, he could play it all. <laughs> He's got the chips to play everything. These guys obviously play a lot with each other. I think he's just thinking about calling. Mm. No, he's not. I think he knows that if he calls here, he's always beat. He's not thinking about calling. All right. Ben just takes it down. Wins a pretty big one. Mm. Cal Burns gets a walk. I think he would have gone to war anyway. With his a7. Mm -hmm. All in. Queen 5 suited. Yeah. I love it. Go. Ben is going to show a deuce. <laughs> he's not the showing show type, is he? Like, do you think he's no. ever shown in the history of his GG poker play? Shown a card. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, actually. Maybe not. Nicholas, like, get out of here with your limp. I think we're going to make it to another break now, no? Yeah, no, for sure. We got some deep stacks up top, too, even if KO busts. I hope KO gets a know. double up, and I hope it's an undeserved double up, you know? Like a Jack-9 jam into Kings, and he somehow flops the straight, like something like that. Every time we get to heads up with deep stacks, though, like something always happens within the first five minutes where it's, it's not like a cooler. It's always someone just donks off with like some random three bet with some bad hand and they just lose like two million chips. It happens every time. Yeah, but it goes quickly when the blinds are this big, though. True. You double barrel and you're going to play like a three million chip pot. Nicholas gets a walk with King Queen suited. Oh, nice. 
see a flop here. Yeah. It's like, don't flop the wrong top pair. Doesn't really flop anything. That turn gives him hope, but... <laughs> A nine on the river, wouldn't that be justice? A beautiful red nine on the river, Nanonoko. Ah, I like this bet by Ben. He can it's afford it. Be. And obviously, Cal Burns has not shown too much passion for the hand up to this point. Nicholas might. Could open, but doesn't have to. He might open just because he's the chip leader, thinking Ben CB mm -hmm. won't defend as wide, but Ben CB's kind of still plays hands, so. Just depends on what do you think. <laughs> do you show that? If he doesn't show this one, he's not. He's never shown in his history of his career. Yep, he's never shown. <laughs> King six, a weaker version of the Ben CB powerhouse, less than 10 big blinds. Let's it go. Ben limps with Queen Jack of Diamonds. <laughs> yeah, no one. They're, they're going to play small ball because they have too close of a stack to each other. Even if Nicholas instead doesn't want to lose 7 million chips, you know? No, of course not. But Nick, before they've battled a couple of times, I think it depends a little bit. Don't forget that Nicholas just snap called 440k with 5-6 and then also called on the flop. That ace True. eight will definitely all in a hundred percent of the time. How quick is this all in going to be? Is it one second, two seconds, or three seconds? <laughs> he plays fast. Two. Uh, Jack six suit is just a little, a little off. Uh, uh, how many blinds is this? Seven? Man, it's probably a call from... <laughs> oh, he calls. There we go. Jack six of diamonds versus ace eight of hearts. There is a six. Now Nicholas needs to find an ace or an eight. Can Cal Burns finally win a hand that he perhaps was not supposed to win? And he does. He's back to 2.5 million. This is not something that I think Ben loves to see because if he now doubles up through Ben, then he actually has more chips than Ben. Yeah. All right. So, is that what you want to see? Uh, undeserved yeah. double up. Well, I this one fair. wasn't. Like, it it was a bit undeserved, but this wasn't the worst one, right? Because it's just two life cards, like one, 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 yeah. one. It's... What is that in like the, like the king queen versus ace queen, like one of those kind of suck outs. That's what you meant. Yeah, yeah. No, even dirtier. Oh. I want to see him win with jack nine against kings. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Do have a battle. I do love watching Kale Burns play. I think he's got good post flop game. How's his spot so big? Nicholas has said has nothing. Yeah, he just won C bet. I mean, that's how big these pots are getting. Just from an open raise and a C bet. All of a sudden, you get 1.2 million in there. And with Ben CB's a chip leader. That's new. Wow. First time? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> First time. But can he hold on to it? That, I don't know. We'll see. I would love to see him. I did pick him to win. I did tell people to win. Wait, I want to see how many people put money on him. Because he usually gets a lot of people betting on him. Yeah, like, but it wasn't much. It was only 7,000 in total. Because like we, we mentioned this before. <laughs> yes, probably, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I would think I mean, maybe the people would still be better on him. Just that instead of putting 50 bucks on him, they put $1 on him. You know, like just quantity wise. Yeah, no, I believe it was quite some people there. You can see it. Uh, 203 yeah, three people. So, yes, actually a lot of people. Second most besides Nicholas. Yeah, that's still a lot, actually. Mm hmm. But the odds were honestly pretty low for Ben, being the shortest stack at this final table, like 13.2 to 1. I agree. Wow. Um, oh, no. This is actually really bad. At first, I was like, wow, <laughs> Cal Burns finally got a river. But no. It's just he made a pair, but now Ben makes two pair. Yeah. 
you're right though that Ben CB's odds were worse because Mike Watson, who's just as is a great player, but you know, like mm-hmm. had more more chips and worse odds. But um anyways, two pair here. Good for a raise? I think so. It it, it checked to the yeah. river. So that makes me want to raise this more. I don't fault him if he just calls. It's safe. But mm-hmm. I think he knows it's very likely he's got the best hand. Ben with the all in on the river. Cal Burns is wondering why did I even bet my nine in the first place? <laughs> he thought he was uh, value betting against a six and four, you know? He's like, oh, oh no, he calls. Out. Out. Cal, Cal Burns is out. And that means that Ben CB will be heads up versus Nicholas Estet. And Ben will come into this heads up as the chip leader. Came in as the shortest stack of them all. What a uh, all time classic heads up here, by the way. Ben CB versus Nicholas Estet. You can't really make that up. Yeah, that's a classic. But uh, tough break for Kale Burns. Just really had just an annoying final table. But top three still. Oh, it's not too bad. Um, I know he's disappointed, but uh, I thought he played great. But here's he the did. heads up. Other than maybe this final hand, which was perhaps unnecessary to bust there. I think he played very good throughout the entire evening, and he just got very unlucky throughout the entire evening. Let's not forget, if he would have just held with those queens against the ace-king in the beginning of the night against Rodrigo, I think everything tonight would have been so different. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. Well, here we go. Ben CB, Nicholas Stett, you will be winning final table bet. Any idea who you got more money on if you win? Yeah, anything? Nicholas. Nicholas by quite a bit. By quite like a bit. A, a couple, right, couple hundred dollars difference. Like Ben CB is like a very, very tiny profit. It's barely profit. But then Nicholas is like, yeah, okay, that was profit. I mean, how did you not believe in Ben CB? This guy, he chatted with you. He, you know, he, he's in. The, he likes esports. Ah, because he we're came gonna punish in you today, Roddy. Ninth, because he came in as ninth place. You picked him as well to win this one, right? I did pick him to win it. I told people to bet on him. People did bet on him. It's not over though. He had he was in the, he was really deep in the last heads up against C Darwin and they he talked off so many chips so quickly and then he folded those two aces in the heads up. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember it when he was quite short? And he got that checked is a shoved pretty off. bad river. Yeah, 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 no, I remember everything. Uh that is a bad river by the way for Ben cuz he may think that he has not nothing is good here. Oh, nice let's it go. Maybe Nicholas got a bit too greedy. But it is nice for Nicholas that he wins a proper pot to start his heads up off. Yeah, but they got... This is a... I wouldn't really say this is a big lead. It's really anyone's game at this point. Both obviously great opponents, great players. Who's got more experience heads up? I want to say Ben CB because he used to play sit and goes for a living for a long time. But Nicholas instead just wins tournaments all the time. He won a heads yeah. up tournaments. So, I, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that question. It wasn't a, que- a question I, I asked uh, myself. I think it's Nicholas instead just because he always gets to heads up anyway. And to win tournaments, you need to play heads up. So I think he's got more yeah. experience <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Ace King versus Ben's Jack Five. Probably here. better with like the 20 big blind heads up. But because I don't even think Ben CB entered the 10K heads up tournament WSOP event, was well, Nicholas said obviously did. So, yeah, I think Ben just can't be bothered waiting around for the next match. King six versus Jack nine. Ben flop stopper. Nicholas has just enough back doors to see a f- turn card. Yeah, I think he'll continue. It could be the best hand. Um, obviously, when you get both back doors, that's like, we got to go with it. He's going to go check raise it. I don't fault this. I think it's a good play. I think that's a great turn if you're going to be check raise Waffen, though, because I would keep firing. You can represent mm-hmm. uh, some clubs very easily. High equity. Uh, wow. Yeah, I like, I like it. Hmm. I don't think Ben CB will fold because he's got the club. Yeah. 
Exactly. I think part. Ben just calls and prays for check check on the river. Hundred percent. I think Nicholas though with the six, he probably will check because it can be the best hand. He could be up against like an ace. Oh, wow, no for mine. He jams all in. This is oh, wow. Ben C V in this spot. Folds. Oh. No. Folded quickly hey. too. Ben C B folding the best hand there. If he calls at that point, he wins the high roller super millions week nine season two. But he folded. Nicholas instead representing the flush and getting the big job play. done. Big play. That's the thing. When Nicholas set makes a big play, you never know. You usually think he's got it right. It always works. Mm. Well done. Wow, amazing. Good match. Yep. Means Nicholas takes the lead in the heads up. Obviously. Nicholas Estad can become the second player to win a high roller super millions in season one and season two. So far, the only one who's done that is Michael Adamo, the one that he was racing all season long to be the best performing player in the high roller super millions season one until Mr. Campbell just kind of pipped both of them in the final week. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Can Ben wow. call here with third pair? No, he cannot. Man, Nicholas is a sicko. And we're also on a 30 minute delay, so Ben's not going to know any of this stuff. He, he's not making the right adjustments. He doesn't think Nicholas Estad is playing this way. Brilliant. Nicholas Estad is playing like he's Michael Adamo at this point. Wow. Snap check raise. These guys are just, yeah. they're out for blood. Mm hmm. I want to say maybe there is some football to watch or something, but it's a bit too late for that. So I don't know why Ben is in a rush. <laughs> Just, he does play pretty quickly. Takes his time when he needs it. Because he's always complaining about Pick. people stalling. You know. Really? Ben is? Oh, uh, like in the bubble. I think like I watched the stream. Uh -oh. and this is going to take forever. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, well, some of those bubbles, they do take forever. That's an all-in for Nicholas, obviously. And then Ben probably yeah. has to fold, right? Man, oh. I know. It's four, but it's 40 big blinds, man. He's folding a flip if he does fold. This is unfortunate. Yeah, but he doesn't but know that. He doesn't. That's right. No. Maybe he's like, just you're like, up against you know ace-king, ace-queen so often here. You are. Yep. Pocket pairs, though. There's a lot of them. Ben C Maybe Ben is just like, you know what? I'm not bleeding anymore. Let's just figure it out now. This be it's a not an call, easy man. call, Roddy. It's not easy. No. What? It's it's not. A, I don't even think it's a call. It's not like it's not an easy <laughs> call. I don't think it's a call. And I don't think Ben thinks it's a call either. It'd be very out of character for Ben to call there for that many big blinds. Bro, that was brutal because obviously King Queen's a hand you hate three bet and folding. Mm-hmm. And uh, Nicholas has turned this around real quick. Wow. Just chalk, check going jack high. Gonna maybe win this spot too. Wow, he does. Yep. Jack, I mean, to be fair, he had a million outs on that river. <laughs> <laughs> to at least either chop or win it. Oh, Ben Value Dutz. owns himself. Oh man, Ben is actually running. Uh, the timing is a wow. bit off so far in the heads up. Sick value raise. Ah, uh, second not a second not flush draw on that board. It's yeah, but still a four flush. It's not easy to make. I've seen you being impressed by a whole lot less than that, Nenonoka. <laughs> Goes check check. Ben will receive the nails and a pair of sixes is good. Finally wins Playing a pot. so fast. You know, you know, Roddy, this is what happened last time Ben CB got heads up with uh, C. Darwin, Simon Madsen. He had a, they had beep stacks. All of a sudden, he just had lost half the stack. Like, you don't know how. Just kind of bled away real quickly. The worst thing is when you watch it back and you realize that you were a one one click on the call button away from just winning the tournament. Your opponent almost handed it to you on a platter. Yeah. That's nice. Some justice. I don't know if justice is the right word, but some redemption. 
Makes a tiny baby straight. Nicholas Waltz does not believe that his power is good there. There you go, Nananoka. Your second favorite blind level. It's good for heads up. Nicholas is playing really well so far in the heads up. Even though obviously it was a bit wild and he took a lot of risk, but... High risk, high reward, something among those lines. It's really fun to see these two go at it. Nicholas fall, uh, flopping a gut shot here and back door. Ooh, funny turn. A big bat might get it done here. Yeah, Checks. but he thinks he's got enough showdown value. No reason to bluff. Can Ben CB get value? It's a tricky one to get, right? Like third pair, no kicker. Yeah, nah. Yeah. A million chips in the middle, too. Five big blinds. Ben will take them. Ben needs to remember, Fold. if he gets it all in with his tournament life on the line, he will not lose. It's not possible. <laughs> it's a beautiful flop for Ben. I don't think he's really going to get a whole lot out of Nicholas here. Flopped it. Does that consider flopping it? Yes. In heads up, absolutely. Top pair, back door open. Ooh. Does that consider <laughs> getting it? Oh, yeah. Nothing. Nothing, burger. We'll never show. <laughs> no, I will just never stop thinking about Ben CB not showing a single hand in the history of his <laughs> GG Poker account. <laughs> you know, last week we had this player at the fire team called uh, Joachim, right? From, uh, Joachim Harlstadt. I played PLO with him, mm -hmm. by the way. Nice guy. And then he took a lot of uh, big blinds of me and I was less happy with him. But you don't remember how someone in the chat was pointing out, he's like, guys, he's from Norway. You don't pronounce it mm -hmm. Joachim. It's like the J from Yes. And for some reason, we were on air, and I couldn't figure it out, right? Because we were both stupid. <laughs> then I was laying in bed later that night, and I'm like, hmm. I think he meant just Joachim. So <laughs> no, like, G Portuguese sounding sound, but it's like, as in yes, and then Joachim. But for some reason, we made it really complicated while we were there. <laughs> and I was just thinking of that later that night. I'm like, man, Nana and I are both so stupid. He was just trying to tell yeah. us that it's Joachim or Joachim. I think all three of us saying it, differently daniel too just because daniel can't get nanoko right so like my <laughs> god <laughs> let's get back to the action real quick though let's see oh wow queen nine this would be a nice pot if he can get called here for ben cb would really swing things mm -hmm. around a little bit nice fold though you Nicholas. can't get this guy yeah Nicholas, really good on the money. We are one minute away from entering one more break. Ace Knight, gonna bump it up. Wow, we are in that territory already. <laughs> <laughs> He's creating it. Yeah. He's like, mate, as far as I know, you have like less than 30 big blinds. You wanna play? Let's play. <laughs> you know, for oh. our little side bet. It'd be really nice if Ben CB wins because I would get so many points. I'd be so far ahead, right? Like, uncatchable. Yeah, it's so it wouldn't be nice. Yeah, exactly. So it wouldn't be nice. <laughs> we love Ben. He came in ninth place. Second place is excellent. Ben CB, $267,000. Sure, he's happy with it. <laughs> oh, he's, he's definitely happy with it, though. I'm... Yeah, of course. Hmm. When we were six handed, he was down to 10 big blinds. It's actually crazy that we're here. Nicholas checking his top pair. Oh, Ben does bet, but one big blind is very tiny. I think Nicholas knows he's the only one. Ooh, with an ace. Terrible. Ben does make a pair of nines on the turn. Yeah, he might think he's got a bluff catcher. He does. He beats four or five. He beats, you know, those little straight draws on the bottom, some hearts. Awful. But can he fold? I... No. no. I mean, I'm sure he could fold, but he doesn't want to fold this time. Nicholas has it again. Nicholas has been paid off every single time he had it, and he's been getting away with it when he was bluffing. 
we are ready for our most likely final break of the night. One more time, if you guys are enjoying the coverage of the High Roller Super Millions, we are here each and every single Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central European time. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. And we'll see you in 4 minutes and 30 seconds for the conclusion of this heads-up match between Nicholas Estet and Ben CB. We are running it back this year. The Colossus, the $400 buy-in, the $3 million guarantee, all the day one flights in the lobby and day two coming up on Sunday. You fired up for this one? Of course I am, Jeff. The Colossus, baby. Mm. Hi, I'm the new Daniel Negreanu, and I'm the old Daniel Negreanu. We both represent online poker sites. We both love Hold'em. I mean, we're basically the same person. Absolutely, man. I used to love watching you play, the way you would read people, call out their hands, and then, of course, call anyway. Oh, stop. I'm blushing. But old Daniel, man, I gotta ask, man, what uh, what's up with this look you got going on here? You you tired or something? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I'm tired of all these freaking beats I've been taking. It's freaking ridiculous. Look at this motherfucking hand. This motherfucker is calling the freaking turn with this piece of hand. Freaking absurd. Whatever. I, I don't even know why I'm so upset. I mean, bad beats, they're just part of the game, right? I mean, they don't really have to be. You see that? I took a bad beat, then GG Care took care of some of my losses. Hashtag, thanks GG. You think uh, maybe I could borrow that laptop and play a little while? No, definitely not. Just say GG to that site you're playing on over there. You just think you're so clever. Nope, just a good read. GG, poker star. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best. Welcome back to what is most likely going to be our final hour of the High Roller Super Millions Week 9 Season 2. 
as Nicholas seems to be getting the best of Ben. But we know Ben is a fighter and he will never give up. But if we keep playing 9 6 offsuit against Ace 10, it's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, looking, looking very dire here. Nicholas is probably going to jam this in the way he likes yeah. to play heads up. Ace 5 suited, 15 big blinds. This really hurts for Ben, right? Like, you just want to see a flop. You want to pick up a pot if you can. Hmm. Yeah. Nicholas says just going to try to lean on his opponent, try to grind him down. And, you know, if his opponent doubles up, cool, but maybe he'll have a lot less big blinds by the time he finally doubles up. Or you just seal it, seal the deal. I'm actually a little bit surprised he folded nine deuce of diamonds there. I know it's garbage, but nine deuce is not very good. And he did flop a gut shot that would not have been good, but he... Obviously, he doesn't necessarily know that. And he had I a think he's trying not to give too. his opponent like a random couple big blinds here and there because he wants to kind of just push, lean on him. Bam. Ooh. 10. Ben probably bet this. 330. Yeah, just what size? Three, mm. Between 340 and 370. I'm thinking 560. I don't know. Just clicking buttons. <laughs> wow. Closer it's to mine more than yours. That still off. Nicholas has not paid off these spots yet. Nothing's and he changed. He still won't. Too solid so far. Just too damn solid. Could even jam this, even though it'd be a bit yellow. He won't jam it, but he will race. Ben defense flops bottom pair, but three spades. He has five deuce of diamonds. Ooh, trip deuces for yep. Ben. <laughs> Surprising. Yeah, it is showdown value, but that's kind of hmm. scary. Wow, <laughs> good value bet. And Nicholas like, hmm, what I beat? Nothing. I'm out. Makes a pair of trees on the river, but obviously he doesn't want to pay off on that board. <laughs> Jack five suited against Jack four offsuit. No, I, I want to say it's okay. hard to win for Ben, but okay. Flops a pair of fours. I think Nicholas may continue. Exactly. Backdoor diamonds and a gut shot. Would have been even better Excellent. if there was a six or seven of diamonds, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> That's a big value bet, man. Makes a stack, calls, misses. Ben CP back in the game. Mm -hmm. I want to say now what, but seems nothing. Ben may think that he needs to bluff to win this hand, but he doesn't. He checks and he realizes that the pair of fours is good. Oh, that's a big one to win. 2.4 million chips. Good swing things. Yeah. He got a lot of value uh, given what he was up against and the, his holding. Ben's just winning all these small pots right now, right? Hits a 7 with do 7. Check raises it. <laughs> yeah, do 7. Didn't even see it. Two of the all-time greats of the High Roller Super Millions. And look at Nicholas just bumping it up with the 6-4 offset. And if Nicholas wins, like, he gets another trophy. You're getting too comfortable with those chip stacks. He's like, 30 big lines way too much for you. <laughs> Get you back down. Top pair versus mid pair. Ben is going to need to improve somewhere. Mm, that is not the turn card he was looking for. Wow. Didn't expect that check on a turn. Nicholas will probably value bet now. Trying to make it look like he's trying to rep the queen, get called by like a seven. 
Ben's probably thinking this is a queen or nothing, but it's not true. It's actually some jacks here. Mm -hmm. Wow, oh, nice makes the call. Nicholas Ostad is too damn good at poker. And just when Ben had a little bit of momentum, most of that has been erased. We do have nines here against nine twos. Nicholas has been playing nine twos a lot, by the way, in this heads up. Suited and offsuit. His favorite hand. Some people like nine six. He likes nine deuce. <laughs> nice, Nenonoka. Nice. I'll do it for YouTube <laughs> chat. Lines go up. Queen five suited against pocket trace. Oh, Ben just jamming the trace. Back to 4.7. I feel like Nicholas might just get one man. back now. I'm just thinking, like, there's a lot on the line in this match for, for everyone. Everyone's involved. <laughs> it's actually amazing how good Ben CB his streams are. Like, he's just always, like, he's hyping. And, oh, Queen 9 against Kings. Nicholas he'll raises. Call, I think, I think he'll fly. race. Oh, I'm surprised. Real surprised. Because yeah, usually that's... he would. I... Yeah. Surprised. Hmm. Uh, you want to do that with your fives and sixes and sevens, but Kings is almost like. It's a bit of a waste. <laughs> yeah. Nicholas is like, how do you like this? You know what's amazing? It's that like Ben hypes it up, right? He's like, hey guys, I'm at the final table. Come tune in. I'd be so afraid to do that. Because he comes in as ninth place. He comes in as the shorter stack. Like, I'd, I'd be mortified of the idea of telling everyone to tune in and then I just bust 12 minutes in. But Ben just hypes it up knowing that he's going to have a phenomenal night of poker. And three and a half hours later, he's still going to be in it. And he is. Well, I'm guarantee you Mike Watson didn't hype it up. You know, he played one <laughs> minute of poker. <laughs> <laughs> Sending out, like, he's making a WhatsApp group to all his friends. He's like, hey, guys, make sure you tune in. Did you poke it TV? First hand, a screen against Kings. And then his friends, they write, like, dot, dot, dot in the chat. It's like, solid run, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sad. We are getting a pretty proper battle between these two, though. They're, they're grinding out these, these pots. So far, Nicholas, has a... Nicholas that hasn't called like those smaller pots as much as Ben CB has, and that's why we see the chip difference. I think at the moment, given how it's mm -hmm. been playing out, big bet. This is a tough spot for Ben. It's a really tough yeah. spot. Seven of Hearts is back up, and it's good. And that is a great oh. river card because Nicholas that might jam this, seeing the tank. Yep. Think his opponent's on like a pair flush draw. And he's got good blockers too. Mm hmm What a phenomenal river here for Ben. What will Nicholas Estad do with Queen 8 offsuit? Missed everything. Wow. He made a bluff before. He oh, checks man, wisely. He's so good. Yeah. It's actually insane something how good he is. Off. I think something seemed off. Like, why do you take so long? I don't know. But there we go. Nice play. Ben is back to over 7 million chips, though. This is closer than it's been for a long time. Needs to find a 10 to win this one. Yeah. Or just some power. Muscle. Some yeah. real power poker. Wow, power oh, poker. A... This tough hand for King 5 offsuit. Calls again correctly, but it's not over. But it really no, looks like Nixon instead has an ace. He looks like he got like an ace five, an ace four or something. Can Ben fire all of the chips? I think it'll Can work. he do what Damn. Nicholas did earlier? Yeah. Jack 10 got there. You can rep that hand pretty okay, I think. Some two pairs, obviously. You can rep a lot. You can rep a lot of hands. He goes Oh my for god, it. he does. But can Nicholas, Nicholas in the same spot as Ben CB was in earlier, where if he calls, he wins the tournament. Ben couldn't press the call button in a somewhat similar spot with Jack-9. Can Nicholas ever make this call with King-5? It seems like an impossible call to make, but if it he does... Oh my impossible. god, he falls! Ben this is, is back in the battle. lead. My goodness, what a sick heads up. Wow.
Great heads up. It's it's excellent, Roddy. They are fighting fighting for every pot right now. Now the roles have reversed. That is insane. What a hand by Ben. Yeah. I mean, Nicholas wow. played it great to flop and turn too, not folding that turn of just a king five. Man, just this is good stuff. Both playing really well. Ben flopping mid pair here. Nicholas is going to have a very, very hard time winning this one. We'll just let it go, most likely. That is insane. Man, both of them were one click away from winning the tournament, but. They were being put in such tough spots that it's almost impossible to make the call. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm thinking? I just thought it was randomly. I'm like, maybe Nicholas Estet hasn't made a final table yet in season two ever since he got that special color name. You think about that? Just got doom switched mm -hmm. once he got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has made up for that. He has made up for 26 buy-ins today. Drop a 10. Which we know it's he's going to use. Ooh, that's a flip-flop, isn't it? There's still one more flip-flop we can do. Lots of river cards. Well, that's actually a very spicy turn. Spicy, spicy. Flip, flip, flip. Ben CB hits the straight. Two point three million in the middle. I mean, Ben will bet, right? Yeah, we know he's betting. Just how much? Nick said, is he getting frustrated yet? To make a hero, this would be a heroic, incorrect call. Very heroic. I still eight minutes ready. left, by the way. Good fold by Nicholas. He's got a lot. Of, both of them actually have a lot of time bank left. I mean, we did point out earlier that Ben has been playing very quick throughout the night, but same can be said for Nicholas. Yeah, they both play actually really fast. They like just like another tournament for them. Like, cool. See you next week soon. <laughs> yeah. I think normally they send a little DM. How did it go for you this week? Oh, they don't have to do that. It's like, I know how you did. <laughs> that was a fun one. Nicholas Estet flops best here with 9-6 offset against the Jack-9 suited of Ben CB. Ben bet the flop. Thinking about betting the turn. He's got a gut shot. Wow, near pot size bet. But Nicholas Estet has been sticky recently. And he folds this time. It's really has flip-flopped where everything going Ben CB's way now. Mm-hmm. He's... Uh, yep. Well, now Nicholas is down to uh, 21 big blinds. So he's kind of in an all in or full territory himself. Pretty insane. Calls. We just checks actually with the eight deuce offset. A single bet here will get it done. This is the nice thing about being the chip leader, right? You can always just bet one big blind. Mm -hmm. Doesn't hurt you. What can you do? Sevens. Race. Ben also, by the way, I said it about Nicholas, but let's not forget that Ben will also be the second player to win a high roller super mirrors in season one and season two. We, we, we do, do kind course. of forget about that, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We always talk about him winning, but then we don't talk about him as a regular of the High Roller Super Millions. But yeah, mm -hmm. Ben can join Michael Adamo in the li short list of players to win a High Roller Super Millions in Season 1 and 2. Nice. On pace. It's called there. And things are looking rough now for Nicholas. He was so close. And this actually is a bit reminiscent to the early uh, final tables that Nicholas always made as he does flop two pair here. You remember that for the longest time, Nicholas was always at our final table. He was always a chip leader in heads up, but he could just never close it out like three or yeah. four times in a row. And then he won the 25K one, and then he also won a 10K one. So you're saying Nicholas said it's going to be back for more second places, at least two more before he finally yeah. ships one.
just need to make it a 25k edition again Lines go up again. Bad news for Nicholas. Real bad. He's going to get jammed on here by day six, I imagine. He's playing 16 mm -hmm. big blinds, but just, just lean. They play a very similar style. Yeah. It's almost like they're both very good. <laughs> <laughs> they both play the same style. Good poker. Right. like a funny board for Ben. He might be thinking about betting because he just got queen high and some random straight draws. Does check. Nicholas still has the best hand here with a pair of fives, but we'll hope that this will just go check, check, and it does. Jack five again. Back to back jack five. Not what your sweet dreams are made of, but... Jackson 5. Well, it's working out for him. Won the last hand, wins this one. Like this, a little 3-bet. Nicholas fighting back now. It looked real bad for a little bit when he was uh, entering like the 3 million chips, but now he's back to 5 points something. Could very well take this one down too. Ben with 6 3 suited makes the call, but Nicholas just flops top pair. Ah, this is a, a heads up for the ages, Nanonoka. Yeah, these guys are grinders for sure. And then they make these crazy big three barrel jams. Obviously, a $70,000 difference, as you guys can see below Nanonoka's camera, between winning this tournament and second place. Winner walks away with three hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars. Oh, Nicholas is that's getting the best of every flop lately. Yeah, but it feels like in heads up, this often happens, but it does really go both ways, and it often feels that you just need to survive like the cold face of the deck before it starts going your way again. But there's too many people who just like get fed up and then they jam and they're like, just couldn't get anything. But it's like, ah, you're patient. <laughs> It will you flip didn't wait long enough for the for the right phase, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, see, starting to flip around. Told you. Uh, Nicholas may even call off a tiny bet here if Ben bets very small, like one big blind or a bit more. That's a bit too much, I think, with Ace Deuce. He didn't fold yet. He's he's thinking about it. Good fault. I think if that kicker was a bit better, if it would actually play, um, maybe. Mm, I don't think the kicker mattered because I don't think he thinks Ben CB would bet the ace high himself. So just was so just thinking about timing in the zone. Ace queen against queen seven. Nicholas trying to trap Ben CB there. Ben not falling for it. Does my, ooh, wow, that's a bad, bad turn, turn guard. guard for Benjamin Roller. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, that's, that's so bad. That's it's like so, especially yeah. with these big bets coming in. Mm -hmm. Ben will oh. just oh. call. Now that river may save him a little. He should. That's a very good card for Roll in the sense that. You know, he could convince his opponent has like a king 10 or something. All in from... It's not over, though. <laughs> ben CB might know he got bluffed earlier, too, by now, too. Oh, man. You turn one of the best cards in the deck. You see one of the yeah. worst river cards, though. Oh, oh he calls. Oh, my God. Oh, ben makes the call, despite the fact that the king of hearts rolls off, and we have flip-flopped again, and Nicholas Estet is back in the lead. Wow. This, wow. Is, uh, this is quite something. And Ben flops this straight the following hand, but it is on a monotone club board. So. Wow, actually gets called, though. Nicholas got to feel good about that ace-queen shove, like 
getting full value on that run out too. Like somehow mm -hmm. did it. It's no shame in letting one go, Nicholas. <laughs> I'm actually a bit surprised. I guess it is heads up. Open nah, I think there. it's fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. I know. I know. Can't fold everything. <laughs> ben just got a, a walk on seven deuce. Let's see. Ultimate feels good. Especially with these two, you don't get a lot of walks in general. Nicholas for jam. Uh -oh. mm. I don't know. Tricky. Bent by call. Yeah. Um, it's possible. It's very guess. possible it would be for all the chippies, pretty much. I'm just wondering what better aces would do this. Ace. Oh, he calls. Calls, here we go. Deuces versus ace six. So far, deuces are in the lead, but it's scary. The deuces are oh. still good. Benjamin Roller needs an ace or a six on the river. And it's an ace of clubs. It's river. unbelievable. He drills it on the river, and he is back to 12 million chips. This is ridiculous. I told you, Roddy. All Ben needs to do is get it all in. He cannot lose an all in. <laughs> but if he calls off with a river, he will lose. You know, he needs to get it in pre flop. I can't believe he hit wow. that card. Sick. Well, the thing is, like, if he hits it on the flop or something, you're like, yeah, okay, but it just had to be the river. Nicholas was set all in. But Ben won't call with 7 3, of course. Damn. 70k too they're playing for. This is so sick. Yeah. <laughs> Bailed out. That man. is it. For like less than a minute, Nicholas had a 12 million chip stack again. Uh oh. Uh, uh. Wow. Hits it. Is Nicholas a set tilted? Does he just spew off more yeah. chips of 5 3 off suit right now? No, he does not. Checks. Then goes for 850k. Nicholas will let go of it. Nicholas' stat is down to 11 big blinds. After Benjamin Roller found that ace of clubs. Ben should play in this tournament every week, man. I don't know what the hell Ben thinks is more important than playing in the high roller super millions on a Sunday, but... He cannot complain yeah. about his luck at Maybe these Maybe he doesn't run tables, this good if he sure. plays every time. Like, has Ben ever gone out early? I guess once or something? At the final table? Maybe once. But like his scores yeah. are really good. Like a first, a second, a fourth. Most of them coming in near the, the middle or bottom. But it's not over. Like this all it's in by Nicholas. A lot. Yeah, that's true. But this is uh, the most amount of chips that I think Ben has had all night long. That's for sure. Ace three all in as well. Get it here. Then big blinds. Possible. Possible to eight nine just shoot. Oh, it in. Here we go. Yep. Ace three versus nine eight. Can Nicholas get one back? So far he can. That's a great flop for Nicholas. It's still a good flop. Ben needs a nine or an eight on the river. Is it gonna get scary? No, not scary. Ace of diamonds on the river. Whew. <laughs> okay, is this our best heads up ever, Nenonoko? Okay, not best ever, but it's a good one. It's definitely very fun. How, how is it not the best ever yet? Which one was better? The Michael Adamo I, one I, against Yuri? I mean, there there have been some good heads up, but this is this is a good heads up. I'll tell you that. I don't remember it ever being this epic, though, with this many flip-flops and this quick as well. <laughs> I know the guy with the, the the dude from Kazakhstan who won the Amsterdam Master Classics of Poker. I know you always love that one. And uh, that was a crazy yeah, the one against Connor. I love that one. But th this yeah. is definitely if, remember you always say every week's been so good so far. This has been so good so far. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Jams the Ace Nine wins another one. Back to six point three. Fives. Oh, interesting. Oh, you can't call with you can't do it. Pocket fives could have made a set. <laughs> oh, Beams aside. Kings. Just limp. That's how you play those kings. Trap them. Ooh, scary uh, flop, though. Still good, though. It's hard for your opponent to have an ace here. Really hard, given how Nick's set plays an ace. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> uh. 
feels bad, man. So Ben will just pay off, right? Yeah. There's no need to raise ever. You just pay off. He oh, he folds. Folds. Yes. Nice he, fold. He looked at those kings and he said, those kings are ugly on this board. He just folds. Wow. Love okay. it. Okay. Nice flop for Nicholas here with Jack four offset. Ben finds an ace here. It's all over, by the way. <laughs> He's not going to find an ace. So hard to find an ace. Tonight has been love ace on the river, but I don't think we see a river here with that bet. Nicholas wins another one. It's 9 million against 8 million. My goodness. This is, this is silly. 4-3 against 4-3, but one of them is looking slightly better than the other one. But they have the same amount of halts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. They're both trapping. This trap, okay. guys. With an 8 or a 9 on the river, this could get funny, right? Nah, they probably will just try and shut it down, just thinking, like, I got okay. I, I got screwed over. So I think this is, this is when we use some time bank here and there. <laughs> Nicholas with the check race, Ben with the bottom end of the straight. Man, I love how quickly Ben just folded those kings. He just looked at them. These kings are disgusting. These ain't my kings. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, this is where the timing's being used. The the fake, the fake out. Does Ben just call? Does he raise? He knows raise looks strong. He's gonna go for it all, but it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah for that boys. This is where you use haha, -ha, but neither of these guys uses ever an emote. Like anyone else would have used haha -ha at this moment. Yeah. These guys, their emoji yeah. game is weak, but their poker game is strong. <laughs> the emoji game doesn't exist. Probably don't even know how to <laughs> click those buttons. Top pair versus bottom pair. Check raise, no, check call, diamonds. I feel like Ben probably uses an emoji very, very occasionally, but just in a very random bad moment, you know, like an actual boomer would. <laughs> How pipped somehow with his two hands. <laughs> 10 plays at this point. Another five would be bad, Niels. Hmm. Oh. oh my god how did he win with nine five off suit well he hasn't won yet the... mate yeah, he turned his hand as a bluff i like this play actually with his hand yeah. oh never mind well done by nicholas i like that actually very well done yeah that was a cool play Oh, both flopped up pair, but Nicholas with a much better kicker. Is Nicholas really going to retake the lead? <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, after this play for sure. <laughs> that was awfully close to a seven. None of that matters. Nicholas now also picks up the jack high flush draw. How creative will Ben get? 1.3 million. What do you think is the play here for Nicholas? This is an interesting spot, I think. Just call. They still got a good amount of stack to play for. No reason to to raise. And I can't believe Nicholas' stat is now sitting on at least 10 million. He looked like he was going to be out. Check, check. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas' stat has retaken the lead. Okay. Is it the best heads up ever yet, Nananoko? It's getting, it's, it's improving. No, it's already really Come good. Come on. It's sick. It's a, you know we're going to be here for another hour, Roddy. It's not, then it's going to be the best. 25 minutes till the next break. If we make it to the next sick. break, yeah, I honestly never want to hear a different word from you again other than, yes, Roddy, this was the best heads up of all time.
at least when it comes to our how they roll as super millions of course i'm not saying in the history of poker guys we're just talking about our tournament series that we've been doing for well a lot of weeks at this point 65 best in season like two i can give you that so far mm -hmm. i don't remember all the heads ups now a lot of them were very short and sweet <laughs> yeah. wow what is this what the hell what is this I don't know. It's a uh, let's play a game of chicken. And did you see first. Eric Seidel is uh, sorry to interrupt. Did you see Eric Seidel his tweet last week by saying like, "Oh, I'm having fun. Only two misclicks so far." <laughs> yeah, and there was a hand. I, I said, "I think that might be a misclick when he fled at the small blind yeah. king six offsuit." Yeah, and he exactly. actually won chips. Mm hmm. That was it exactly. 10 7 makes the call. Flop queen, queen three. It sucks to fold here if you're banned, but you also know that if you call, you're just going to lose more chips. So. Yeah, gotta minimize the damage. <laughs> Keep it simple. Take that big blind. I already had the deuces against the aces. Well, ace, what was it? Ace six? Ace nine? Whatever. Six. Ace six soft suit. Ace nine, he would have snapped call lot... three, I think. Yeah. A lot of aces on the river today. That's for sure. I thought that book was out of print. I don't know. Maybe. I'm pretty sure that if Cal Burns lays in his bed tonight, he's going to play like the Queen's Gambit on his ceiling and he will just see <laughs> flops and he will see an ace on the river. Over and over. He's like, no, <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> will Ben CB bluff? I think if he bluffs small, he's going to get called. If he wants to bluff, it needs to be big, but he gives up. Ace four is good. <laughs> Back to ten point seven. Oh my goodness! King eight versus queen, a king and two low cards, and I think it could be all over. Um, yeah, Nicholas. If he limps, he would be bad because I think he's, he would limp call this type of hand. I don't know, what's Nicholas doing? Trying to figure out how many opponents his big blind has. Just click his his name it'll change it for you <laughs> if he jams he's gonna get absolutely snap called and opened one second but nicholas yeah, just limps good for ben cv make it like 3x probably get cold mm -hmm. nicholas looking for that king does not find a king Nicholas lets it go. Ben is back to 7.3. Little over 20 big blinds. I mean, they're both getting real short, man. This cannot go on for much longer. This is one of the highest blind levels we had. We're at level 40. And like this wasn't a massive field. I right, this was not one of these fields with like five or six hundred players. For like a regular high roller super millions, this is one of the highest blind levels we've had. Because they play yeah. so fast. And it's too. getting really shallow too. Yeah, they're playing exceptionally yeah. fast. Like the blinds go up soon and they will both have 20 big blinds. And they're basically flipping for 70k. Well, we're not flipping yet, but yeah, maybe. We'll see. Come on, with 20 big blinds, these guys, that's, that's flipping. Like we have one more hand and then the blinds go up. Two hundred, four hundred. <laughs> Nicholas has said flops best. Ben does have all the back doors. That four is no good. Nicholas still checking. Nicholas makes two pair. I'll check again. See if my opponent wants to bluff. Ben should be going to do one of those weird calls or bluffs. <laughs> Earlier tonight. Check down to the river. With... 
Earlier tonight with the king of clubs, he got very creative. He's got the queen of clubs this time, but Ben, this ain't PLO. <laughs> oh my oh god, he my does god. a snap called. Why? Well, that is no good. Ben CB got snap called there. I think Ben has been playing uh, a little too much PLO lately, <laughs> Lelinoko. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't matter because the opponent didn't even fall, think about folding two pair. Like, it was just such no. a weird line because when you just check, 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 you're representing a random river two pair. Oh no. Weird. Well, blinds go up and Ben is ultra short now, man. He's down to seven big blinds. Or eight, excuse me. We can all in King Nine, absolutely. Well done by Nicholas. Nicholas' stat is back in a commanding lead. Things are looking very dire for Ben CB. He got saved with an ace on the river a little while ago. We can gem King Nine again. Mm -hmm. uh, there is bleeding, and there is having an open wound with blood pouring out of it. Hey, Queens! It's like, what do you do, Queens? Do you jam or do you check? Because it seems criminal, right? Like to check Queens. <laughs> Ah, oh, seems wasted. Yeah, like this one I don't really mind that much because he's so short, right? That Kings early I did think was a little bit uh, wasted, but he had the Queens with six or seven big blinds. What does it really matter? Poor Ben as well. He's like, damn you, Nicholas. You've been jamming seven out of the eight last hands besides when I had Queens. <laughs> That's where you limp fold. And Nicholas is like, all right, I can't do this every hand. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is it. Let's see. Has to be a call. King 8 makes the call. 9 6 of diamonds against King 8 offset. That is a good flop for Ben CB. He takes the lead. No longer ahead. Needs a 9 6 5 or a diamond. 9 6 5 or a diamond. It's none of that. King 8 offsuit holds. And it will be Nicholas Ostet who wins week 9 of season two of the High Roller Super Millions and joins Michael Adamo as the only two players on this planet to win a High Roller Super Millions in season one and season two. Oh my goodness. Nananoko, we looked at the lineup tonight. We're like, that's pretty good. Sure, it's not like a bracelet online like last week with Eric Seidel, but this is pretty good. It could be fun. I think it was fun with a capital F and a capital U and a tiny N. This was amazing. It was a great tournament for sure, especially the heads up was super long, but uh, wow. I mean, Ben CB, great, great performance today, great score. I know he wanted to win. He's going to be a bit disappointed to lose another heads up on our Super Millions. Uh, but Nicholas Estet, man, that guy just, he's just upswinging. Seriously, the only part that was tough for him was the heads up match, right? Uh, that was obviously a long match. It was tough for both players, but before that, he really just cruised upwards. He's just the most solid player. We were asking, when are we going to see Nick's set? It's been a while, right? And when he shows up, just ships the tournament. He's back. Loved it. Just so good. Yeah, he, he really was so good. Obviously, at one point, it started slipping away from him a little bit in the heads up because Ben was also playing good and hit a couple of rivers here and there. But let's not forget how the night started for Nicholas Ostet. The very first hand, guys. You enter a final table, you qualify on Sunday. You've got a day and a half to recharge. First hand of the night, Kings. Somebody gems. You call Kings hold. And he went from like sixth place to like second or third. And a little bit later, he was the chip leader. And he never let go until we were down to three at one point when Ben took the lead. Tonight was a wild night. I do think we have to talk a little bit about... First of all, let's talk about Neil. Neil, that ace eight flops play against Elis Parsonen was awesome. We won't forget about it. Well done, a satellite winner. Our Brazilian satellite winner, Nanonoko. He came with some fire and fury tonight. He played with a lot of fire, right? He won the Battle of Malta main event for like 600000 in a $500 tournament. Side of satellite into the Super Millions. And he had heart. He was fighting every battle. His fight right away. Four betting King Queen also was wrong. And play was... You know, the big hand actually was for him was when he check raised the ace five also and the queen seven six and Kale Burns call up the check raise with just ace ten high. Uh, did make the correct lay down eventually when he made a straight over. He got the little straight over the big straight, um, but he eventually mm -hmm. did bail out. But he he played great. I think he was a phenomenal player. But uh, also Kale Burns. Kale Burns had a phenomenal. He played great. 
He was involved in so mm -hmm. many pots, but he could not win an all-in for the life of him. He could not win like a you know a way ahead like post flop, and you know even got brutalized with pocket aces against the queen ten also Ben CB it goes queen queen turn and river. It it was just unfortunate for him, but he still got a th top three finish. So it it is something still like you don't want to be chip leader and go out and. Six or seven, that's obviously god awful, but you know, in the end, like Nick Sestet did his thing. I can't believe it, he's just too good. He's uh, there's yeah. a new color for his name. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna give him the rainbow color soon, man, just because he represents everything and he has won everything. Gets another trophy to the trophy case. You can keep on scrolling. He's gonna break the client soon, man. This client, like the profiles, are not designed. For one man to have this many trophies, Nenonoka, let me tell you that. Uh, we can talk a little bit about the runner-up of the WSOP main event as well. Dario Sammartino, that ace-king, Nenonoka, the ace-king against Ben CB. When Ben bluffed him with the king of clubs. Ben, uh, a big, a big, I don't want to say favorite, but Ben kind of in love today with blocking with, the, or bluffing with the not flush block, is it? Yeah, maybe that's kind of like his little bit of a frequency setter for him. He's like, well, if I have the nut blocker, then I'll go for some bluffs. Therefore, he doesn't over bluff by doing with every club he's got. Um, but that was a big hand, um, you know, in that spot, it was three way to the flop. Dario checked as the pre flop raise up the ace king. Came, what, nine, three, two, or something like that. Ben bet just the king of clubs. Got called. Turn was the ace. The flush got there. Checks to Ben. He bet the third pot. And Dario Sarmatino's just called the tournament. I would have loved to see him jam. I think you agreed. He only had 11 big blinds behind. Um, close out the action. I like a call better had he had an ace king with, the, with, uh, with one of the clubs. Therefore, he's got the backup. But now his hand is so vulnerable. Would have loved to see him jam. He just called. And then it came a wheel straight. And Ben C put on the muscle. He put it all in and Dario folded. And fortunately, he, he went out pretty early after that. So... Big, some big hands today it was a lot of fun to watch yeah some very big hands especially i think in the heads up there's too many to go over but i guess mm -hmm. the one that finally i think swung things in momentum of our good friend nicholas Estet was the 10-8 where he riveted the two pair ben cb going for the bluff with queen six i believe the queen of clubs yeah but i didn't really feel that was necessary it kind of came out of nowhere like it was a decent pot, but it wasn't that big until Ben made it like 3.8 million or something, or 4 point something. Yeah, that was seem a bit unnecessary, especially because it's harder to represent a flush when you just check flop and you check turn. So you're just basically representing a random two pair on the river that might not even raise sometimes just because the flush got there. I don't know, I thought it was a weird spot, but what I do like about this heads up is they kind of just dealt the same things to each other, right? Like they just kept jamming on mm -hmm. each other, they would make plays, but they both had an opportunity to bet, bet, jam as a bluff, and both players missed the call button. They folded incorrectly. They were both tough spots, yeah. and they were big bluffs, and it was just, that's what made it really fun. It wasn't just one big hand, it was they took turns doing the same move to each other. In the end, Nixa set got it done. Um, because he's the multi... How do we know how many titles he has now? Three? I don't know. Some yes. When number. it comes to the high roll of Super Millions, it's, def it's three. One of them was a 25k. Uh, but he is one of the best performing players of Season 1. I think he finished in the top three. Maybe even second, just behind Mr. Gamble. Uh, we haven't seen Mr. Gamble in a while, by the way. What's up, Mr. Gamble? Get at it. I think it was really fun. I think in Ben's defense, when he had Queen-6, I think Queen-Jack did make a straight two, right? Because the board was Ace-King-10. So uh, maybe that queen fulfills a double purpose yeah, there. But who just who keeps checking? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I mean, yeah, maybe try to make him uh, put some chips in the middle. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's safe to say that this was a phenomenal night of poker over at ggpoker.tv. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel of GG if you haven't done that yet. Any final words, Nanoko, before I let the people go? No, uh, you you. You got away with that one, Roddy. I almost scored an extra like 12 to 13 points on our little side bet, but I did get one mark in our little set over set battle. I got one, you got three, pocket fives versus pocket fours. It was great. I'm ready to chat with you again one week from now. Yes, because that is the only time I ever chat with Nenonoko. I showed him a hand once. He got so upset at me that I'll never do it again. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next week.
Elkie was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my God. Michael Otamo is the best. 